Bye. <laughs>
Hello guys, welcome to week three for the final play day of Talent League on this week, I should say, not the actual final pl uh, play day. I am Pyro and I am joined by my beautiful friend and fellow caster, Golu Molu. How are you today? I'm doing, uh, doing spectacularly well, thank you Pyro. Lovely evening and it's uh, lovely to join you here for this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well as well. Thank you for asking, Golu. Oh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> more than welcome. But today's game, more importantly, for the minor, we have Guardians Alpha versus Goldens. Goldinis, I think it is. I always mix up the team <laughs> names for some reason, as you know. But Golu Molu, more importantly, can you tell us about these two teams today? Well, it's, uh, we're in quite an interesting position for this game. <sighs> You're looking at you're looking at these two teams, right? Goldini's seventh in the leaderboard at the moment. Two games that they've played, they've won one, drawn one. So not not looking at a terrible record, but the, I mean they're lower down because they haven't played this extra game. A lot of the teams above them have that third game in hand. So with an extra game to spare, we'll see what they can kind of bring to the table in this one. But we're looking over at their opponents, right? You're looking at the Guardians. They are just a little bit above them. In fact, they're directly above them. Also on that one-on-one -on -one record, only ahead on round differential. So for both of these teams, it's quite important that they pick up the win today just to boost themselves a little bit higher up in those standings. Obviously, a draw for them isn't going to really be ideal because both want to be jumping a little bit higher up to the scoreboard. You want to be hitting that top four spot. Especially sort of near towards the midpoint of the season, starting yeah. to go into that midpoint now. Yeah. You want to start building a lot of gaps. What we see in the league table right now is a lot of teams are on equal heading. There's, you've got the top sort of sections, which are on the six points. And then you've got the four points in the middle table. And then obviously towards the bottom end. So you need to start building gaps here, getting wins. Because we see a lot of draws in the minor league. And that's something yeah. that will build a lot of excitement towards the later play days. but not at this point you want to start at, for both the teams really to get more wins to get higher in the leaderboards as you were saying but, but there, there is there is real quick a little bit of reprieve for them right because they both these teams on that four points and a lot of the teams above them on that four points what we have five teams tied on four points six teams tied on four points five, six, I think all of those teams have the extra game in hand right so a draw will put them ahead but one of them needs to just keep surging forth. Yeah, one point is not going to make a massive difference coming to next play day, especially with that game in hand. You want to be the three points. You want to yeah. put as much pressure onto the team as we can. But going on to today's game, going on to the map bands here. Now, the map we have actually got for today's game is Clubhouse. Uh, ooh, <laughs> interesting. I mean, Clubhouse is a lovely map. Yeah. You, you love the basics. It's a map which, I'll, I'll, from my own little recent experience within the uh, the unranked sessions, <laughs> the ranked sessions when I when I decide I hate myself, they uh, I haven't seen much clubhouse. You know, it seems to be a map that just doesn't turn up in the pool, and I haven't seen it be played in a little while, which is unusual. A lot of teams now are starting to get rid of it, but both these teams they want to go for something fundamental. They want to go for something that both of them are going to understand and have a good un like, sort of knowledge of how they want to play and more importantly be able to expect what's going to be brought out by their opponents so it'll be interesting to see how that sort of ebbs and flows as the, as the map plays out actually club is club is an interesting map as well especially on strategy wise it's mostly figured out we do see teams tend to not go towards that cc tv side anymore especially in pro league uh, the most favored site is actually that bomb floor site yeah. So I think most of the teams, both of these teams here today, will definitely go to that bottom floor site and then go to the uh, gym bedroom. And we have seen Bar come out quite a bit of times as well. It's either yeah. between Bar and CCTV for those third technical favorite site if you manage to do win those two previous rounds before. But on to the, the staff votes and the community vote. For the staff vote today, we have 87%. <laughs> For Goldinis and 13% for Guardians Alpha. So, Uncooked, mm. I know you're in the chat here. Is that you who is voting for Guardians Alpha again? Uh, he does love his little underdog stories, doesn't he? We, we love him for it, but, you know, what, what's his current record at the moment? Well, he, Seven he, for 29, I think he said recently, which is... Um, he, got, mm. yeah, he got the Wednesdays, actually. From Not the uh, He got Wednesdays, the only one out of the staff vote to get Wednesday's minor game. 
Fair enough. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's something there then that we're just all missing out on. But the community vote, well, that's just a little bit closer, Pyro. If we take a look, a little bit of a draw incentive. And we've had a couple draws within Talent League this season. J just a few. 6% on that draw. But, I mean, again, you're looking at Goldinis. They have that advantage. 65% in the community poll compared to the 29% for the Guardians. I mean... Well, it looks like we have our, our definitive favourite for this matchup, and whether that will be true by the end, well, we have up to 12 rounds to find out. I believe we are almost ready for our game here, Pyro, which is uh, good fun. Do you, do you agree with the staff vote, though? Do you agree with the community vote? Do, do Goldinis take this? I'm not going to be biased here. I If I had to guess, though, I will say Goldinis, I, just from what I've seen, are the better team. It will be close, definitely. I'm kind of thinking a draw here, as we will see most of the times in the minor league. But we are into the game, and we are already into our map bans here. Maverick and Thatcher being off the board from the attacking side. Clubhouse, you, you would expect that um, for the main breach, stopping that CCTV. Hold, and on the defensive side here, we're going to look for a Cade, a Mirror, or a Valkyrie. We do see that Valkyrie ban come out. Valkyrie, a massive operator on Clubhouse. A lot of intel, a lot of spots you can put these Valk cams. That I just I can see why Guardians Alpha had banned the Valkyrie there. Well, yeah, you're looking at right. Your your two top floor sites, both of those are completely destructible. There yep. is no real safe space to plant on any of them. The only real spot you can think of is, is inside of gym bedroom, and that's on top of the bed. And oftentimes teams will preempt that that might be the play when there's something like the Valkyrie or the Pulse, or even just someone downstairs with a nitro cell, if you have a reliable way of giving them information on where to send that explosive utility, you'll have those shotgun holes made next to the bed so you can sail it up through the hole, land it on the bed, and well, Bob's your uncle, you get the kill. The lineup, though, coming in, I mean, oh, sorry, what would you say? Mirror, standard ban, right? This is something that you expect to see. Common on basement, common on gym. Sometimes you'd see it upstairs, but again, it's just one of these comfort bans. It is going to be CCTV okay, that's coming out first, though, for the defense. And, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have a different take on this, Pyro, but sometimes, you know, we've seen teams recently start to lean away from bringing CCTV out as early just because of how solved attacking it has become in recent years, especially with the availability of that sixth pick, just to make things a little bit smoother. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I think I said it in the actual pre-game that CCTV has started to definitely go down in popularity, especially in Pro League, especially in these T3, T4 leagues that we do see here. So I am quite surprised about Goldini's pick here onto top floor, onto CCTV. But we'll see how it rolls for this side here. They have got a Thunderbird, which I have seen quite a lot more times creeping into the defensive lineups going on. Well, yeah, it enables you to have a little bit more of an aggressive playstyle, right? You can take these early gunfights, you can challenge onto the attackers early on into the round, and if you get a kill, great. If you don't, you still put them on edge a little bit, but more importantly, if you take some damage back from that fight, you can run back, go to those Kona stations, and just revitalize yourself, get yourself topped up again, and you're ready for more action later on into the round. Interesting that Itchy's bringing out this Kali. It's not an operator that we see a ton of, and despite the recent change allowing you to have, well, any of those one times scope still choosing to rock the classic reflex c which used to be its only option although taking some early damage into the round the ace taking some shots as well that's not well ideal for them but still alive able to get that breach opened on up because it's only the mute jammers that are going to be on it you see both of those cade claws invested on the garage walls instead which is well, an interesting option it does offer a little bit more ease of access to the site for the attackers Especially with the fact that we did have that uh, the Maverick ban and the Thatcher ban. That is probably the reason why they did bring out Kali here. And we do hear the Kali gadget actually go off towards that main breach side here. So hopefully we will see it be opened. And yes, the ace is actually getting the wall open right now. But there is still a lot of pressure from this Wrath, this player. Brum Brum here playing on R2. He does actually see the feet of the player playing on the garage door. But if you do hear, we do see them opening bottom garage as well goalie so a lot of pressure going to be coming on to this rafters player yeah i mean we'll see what what they're able to do the uh oh well, my is the one playing up there thunderbird trying to get some shots outside to try and just see what they're able to find 
Nothing for the time being. Neon just still watching down in lounge, making sure no one runs downstairs. And this is, you know, a good way to hold on to Ace finding the first pick of the game. That is the Wamai who was playing on rafters going down. The refrag comes back onto Yuri Habana, who was playing downstairs in stock, I believe, at the time. No longer going to be a factor in the rest of this round. The garage walls had been opened up by the Xkara, though. The swing from the Cade going to land with the Ace. That's another big pick for them now as they take that man advantage for themselves. And with 45 seconds, the Diffuser is still in the hands of the attackers. It's Itchy now taking up that Repel. Wasn't there to overwatch for their teammate earlier in the round, though, because Pyro and we'll yep, have to yep. see what they can do from here. Ooh. Beautiful kill for the sledge there. And that is on to the Jaeger plane. I think he was playing towards yet there. He's flanking from the bottom side. And what's interesting is this breach here is going to be a crouch hole. So it's going to be very hard for Itchy here to push in and push past the red player. It's 40 seconds left. Itchy does get a killer onto Cox there on left. the Cade. So it's only two players from the side of Goldies here on the defensive side. Five seconds but left. they are in very much big power positions here. Itchy's going to go for the plant but goes off it. There's two seconds left. Plant's going down it, on the zero seconds left. Jemis goes down. It's a two versus two situation. All they have to do is get rid of the player Operators who's playing on the diffuser and the mute oh. being able to do it, leaving that plant way too long into the round. You've got to go. They put the plant down with zero to one seconds left, Golu. Seven seconds extra onto that round, which allows for the defensive players to rush around, as we saw from the mute there, who got the kill onto the Cali who was planting. How does the Twitch miss so many of those oh, shots onto the no. mute crossing? That's so free. You ju There's no Nitro Cell available. You just have to just shoot them. They're literally running in a straight line across. You're tracking. You just, just come like... That shouldn't be allowed to happen, Pyro. It it, it, it you can say what you will about Goldinis there. They did a good job finding uh, you know, the opening pick. Well, it was actually Guardians that found the opening pick through Kaz on his ace, but able to bounce back, find the numbers back, get to that four versus three advantage... I just uh, still feel like when that was coming down for the plant, when they were looking to execute, to the attackers spot. had everything going in their favor. Definitely, yeah. They, they couldn't land the shot. They just couldn't land the shot, was it? From that Twitch player. It was disappointing that he missed the shots there. But if you leave the plant that late, you are running a very high risk of losing a round. And gold, all her gold Edenies had to do was run the gauntlet, and it paid off dividends for them and they do get a 1-0 lead here going into the second round in which they pick the bottom floor site here go i've seen a lot of teams do a very heavy roam on this floor as i think definitely for this bottom floor you need at least two or maybe three players playing that top floor as you can go from the very top floor maybe towards bedroom and we do see a lot of players playing towards that cctv side watching on good to garage area so will we see that from Goldinis, or will we see a very on-site focused turtle hold? Well, you can see Last Killer just running around all the way. This is another one of those ones. Which way is it? Is it Last Killer? Is it Mudder? I'm assuming it's Last Killer. Last Mudder killer. must be yeah. must be a previous clan. But well, <laughs> Last Killer running around, looking around, finding the drones as he falls back. And again, it's just about wasting that time, right? Because yeah. Well, that, that's all you need to do. The first pick comes through there. That's thumbs going down. The Jaeger, who did a good job at bringing back the balance in the last time. And, well, that's this hard support. The ace player on Guardians Alpha, who's found the opening pick two rounds in a row and is looking for yet another kill. Hunting down this Thunderbird. The impact grenades instead of the Nitro being an interesting option, but it's going to allow the rotation to find Neon's head. And now he's going to go back for more. Looking for seconds, trying to finish up his dinner, but no. Ace currently able to play around this garage window. The shots from the Kali, though, catching off the rotation. There's nowhere for you to run, my friend. And well, just like that, the attack continues to pick up momentum. And they'll want to look to snowball this lead now as they can start to work towards these hatches. Yeah, definitely, definitely in favor of Guardians Alpha here. They've got two players down from the side of Goldini's here. So that limits the flank that we were talking about early on to the round. It didn't waste a lot of time there, Go. They wasted a minute, and this allows the players such as Jemis on that sledge and the two hard breaches on the Ace and Hibana to start to get to work on this on this middle floor site here, opening up the vertical plays that we see quite a lot on towards the kitchen and main stairs area where the Icox here of the smoke is going to try and guard. Will he get a wait. And more weight. Just be careful. He's 
definitely waited for this hatch to be opened or any sort of player, such as that sledge there, which should be opened towards the uh, stage area here. I think actually the smoke of Icox is rotated back down towards the bottom floor. Yeah, we do see Jemis try and pre-fire where he Icox was playing. He's actually rotated towards dirt area. I think it's the uh, Yuri of on the Hibana who's pushing towards that dirt area. So we will see a double push here going. Well, I think Dirt's a really important position to hold as an attack and just pushing through the smoke jump and the shots will get the Inja out on the Cox and well. That's going to be that Dirt control obtained for the attackers. Four versus two here with 20 seconds left. You've got to be careful of Grumbarachi who's hiding behind the box right at the back. Cheeky angle watching onto that hatch for when they choose to drop. Itchy has that diffuser in hand and they are on that kitchen hatch waiting to see if the drop's going to happen. It will. The Ace able to find another kill onto D7 and that's not going to be enough as he's trying to land the shots onto the suppression from Dirt. He can't quite get to that diffuser carrier. The AK shield using to deploy and hide away from the Habanas. They, Ryuri runs straight on in and will get caught out but Jemis from the hatch above the guardian angel watching over as well that's gonna be the last kill and the first round for guardians alpha picked up this half yeah definitely in that round we saw the early trade-off the early advantage for the side of guardians alpha there going into a four versus three with one minute 30 seconds left but what was interesting that round, and what actually took me by surprise, is instead of Guardians Alpha getting more aggressive, they took back the time, they used the vertical, they opened up the hatches, which we saw they were doing effectively, and it went down to a 4 versus 2 with 30 seconds to 20 seconds left. But the defense of Goldinis, instead of pushing back towards site, we saw Icox there was a very aggressive player on the defense there with the smoke, who was playing towards the main stairs with one minute left and then rotated back to around dirt. To but many he gave up dirt way too quickly. He got killed on the dirt by Yuri. I think a bit too quickly there, Gunnar, especially. Yeah, you got those toxic babes to play around. You've got the shotgun. You can just go prone and hide around a corner. I mean, there's so many nooks and crannies and little weeds in the pathway as you walk down. Yeah, you, you can usually do a little bit better of a job of stalling. Maybe if you have like a Banshee there to support you as well. I, mean, I think they did have a Banshee there. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure why you're not waiting to play off of that. You know, it's a bit of support you can have from your teammates' gadgetry. We're seeing this upstairs, last killer, a lot so There's much sooner to get this reinforcement up, and that will just help keep you safe. That wall isn't going to be shot through. There's no real worry. And then you can play around this garage once again. You know, you have that classic old SSG run that was, well almost two years ago now when they last won SI, you know, this was something that they were doing a lot of on Clubhouse specifically, where you go upstairs, you reinforce these walls around you and you have a little bit more freedom to play around you using something like the mute mozzie combo in its heyday to try and slow down the attack. And you haven't got, well, either of those operators now. That mute has been swapped out for the Cade. But the idea of having these walls reinforced just to give you more cover, definitely still here, although you can hear those Selma charges going off already on that CCTV wall. That's going to prompt the Thunderbird just to drop, try and run away. Yuri gets injured elsewhere, though. That's GJ the Cade inside of sight. The refrag will come in, though. That's Ace once again finding the opening pick for the attackers, though. The teammate already fallen in this round. That is actually Ace getting three rounds in a row where he's got the first pick. We saw it last round and in the first round where he's got the first pick for the attacker side every time. And Ace, we don't normally see as an entry up. We see him more as beyond drones here. So, yeah, to be fair, with the Kali on the um, drones, you can have the Ace pushing in as an entry fag along with the Finker here. Yeah. But if he dies, that's one hatch and... Maybe the triple wall towards church side, which you, you can't get. You're relying on the Hibana, which in this case, in this round, had been picked off first. So you need to be a lot more careful if you're ace here. So a bit of a risky play, you could say. It gets interesting now as well, right? Because you still have two of those Selmas. And with two Selmas, you can open a hatch. And if you can open a hatch, well, you can get down into the basement. If you can get down into the basement, you can plant the diffuser 
and then you can win the round. But, oh, the swing, the couple, you're gonna land that second shot onto Berg, he goes down, Cade off the board as well now. That's another Nitro Cell no longer available for the defense. You've got to be careful of thumbs here. Don't just drop this ladder, please. Check your drones, don't give them any, anything careless now that you have this advantage. The first Selma will be thrown out by Kaz, and I believe that is over on that kitchen hatch. Remember, you can actually get that kitchen hatch, even with it's Cade on it, if you're using something that, like, oh, is that what's happened? Yeah, Has it been impact? Oh no, that's big. That is. Suspect. We saw the holes earlier towards that side of the hatch. That is the yeah, one risk we're going towards that kitchen side hatch. Is the impact trick, which we see a lot of times. Actually, yeah, he, yeah, he did get impact tricked here. His ace has zero charges left, so they can't get any of the hatches here. So they've got to go for a main sided breach. And that's where, if you're ace, you would rather have done it on the triple wall that we see him pushing towards left on the backside of church. 15 seconds left, it's a four versus three situation. Definitely in the favor of Goldini's here. Make that a four versus two situation as ace gets another drag there. But the Kali has the diffuser here. I don't even know where Kali is. He's planning diffuser. It's two versus one situation as trades come off very quickly. They are planning towards church side. But there's two players to get rid of if you are on the Malusi here, and they have gone towards that main breach side. No, it's just wrapping around this A bomb here. He takes a lot of damage from the the Cade there, but not the Cade. I should say the Kali. It's a one versus one situation as he does get that kill. Does he know he's left? On this left side. He's on your left. Does he, he know? He does know. And he gets the triple kill. A beautiful, beautiful clutch there. Brum brum, and. One thing I did notice as he was pushing around towards that church bomb was the Thunderbird. He got two Thunderbird stims that entire clutch. Yeah. Thunderbird stims are uh, very helpful. Getting that extra health allows you to win those gunfights. I mean, you picked them up, he picked up what, a couple inside a church afterwards. So those would have been off cooldown during his uh, during his push. They wouldn't have been able to use them, otherwise they wouldn't have gotten them afterwards. But you still see the value that you have, right? Of just getting that little stimulus boost. I think it's more interesting to me is the fact that, well, Guardians Alpha, they had Kaz send it so deep into sight. That's just to cause a disruption, right? If he can find a pick or two just to push the defenders back to stall out as much time as possible for Itchy to get down that diffuser, well, that's brilliant. That's all you need to do is just stall out time for them. And then you end up in this two versus one situation, Gem Gemis and Itchy, right? Why aren't you taking that gunfight together? Jemis is hiding inside a moto, Attack just waiting to see what's going to happen. Bomb. Itchy is leaning into these engagements against the Malusi when the Malusi has that bomb chassis to dip and duck and dive around. I don't know. I think you, you just need to play off of each other a little bit better in that situation. That should be around you winning in that post-plant situation if you just play numbers correctly. But ultimately, Goldinis have won another round where, I have to be honest with you, Pyro, they, should have won. they shouldn't. Guardians it should Alpha. be 3-0. It should be 3-0. I was about to actually bring that up. The fact that they first round they won was based off that last second um, kill coming in. I think it was from D7 Berg with the SMG 11. And that last round with that clutch from Brum there. It's just... Guardians Alpha are very good at getting the early picks, especially with the Ace. Getting the early picks, putting themselves into a man advantage. But their executes and post plant situations do need a lot of work on here, Golu. I hope they can actually get around where they have a favor, where they have an ideal post plant situation where they don't choke. That yeah, they strike me as, you know, which just, just cleaning up these last little bits would do them absolute wonders in the server, right? Just, just these grounds that they can just be a little bit tidier on. But now we'll have to see what's going to happen at this time around, whether they can correct that mistake or whether they're able to get the advantage that they had before. You still got Last Killer on that oh, on that Thunderbird, which has been rocking a lot, really, this half. Just trying to use that to just cause problems, run around, roam around. you got that Spear, which, I mean, it, it feels a little bit absurd that you can get the Spear as a defender. It has no recoil, high damage, good fire rate. Lovely weapon. The ability as well. Mm. I mean, healing on the defensive side, even it, it's without good. that, um, when you have a better healing op, because don't get me wrong, Doc is a very good operator, but it has an, a, a layer of risk to be with it, obviously with pointing your stim pistol and you actually have to have decent what aim, because sometimes we do see people miss the stim Ooh. shots, unfortunately. Thumbs taking a lot of damage there, 
um, from a gunfight that he probably attackers. shouldn't have took. But the good thing about what you were saying about Thunderbird earlier is you can risk these gunfights and still get your health back towards the near fall situation. Well, we am I still holding on to rafters for the time being? There's ADSs in position just to continue to delay this time. I really like this use of that Selma, though. That will help open up that wall and give them another angle into rafters. If they've done it a little bit higher, maybe. But no, it's been, has it been shot out? Yeah, so I think Ooh, it has been that's quite big. That's going to make it a little bit safer for this one. Maya, and there's only a minute left here, Pyro, for them to try and dislodge this position. No, no, no kills on either side as well. It's a very slow round. But we do see him take towards of lobby hit. And the Jaeger's gonna have to play around this um stairs very well. But no, Yori gets the kill. But there's a refrag from Brum towards that garage side. Yeah, he's on rafters, but there's two players playing towards the lower garage, and I don't think he knows quite yet. No, it flashes are coming out here. He's gonna have a very tough time of trying to get on away from this gunfight, trying to hold. It's definitely a death position here. But Yori gets the kill onto Brum, and that is Guardians Alpha taking control of Garage. Last killer does get a kill onto Jebus here and evens out the man count. We've got 17 seconds left. It's a crouch rotate and there is a player playing towards that top red. Goldie should win this. They've got all the positions they can win. Triple kill coming from Yuri there. Make that a quad kill from Yuri. He's just popping off with this. Hibana with the last yet again down to this last plant Operator position and gun. last oh. killer is just going to get the oh, kill from low no. and yet again Goldini's have just won in a situation that they shouldn't have won in a round that which they really and realistically shouldn't have won there I feel bad for Itchy no it's not Itchy it's Yuri wasn't it oh no Golu I oh it's just Good time play. Time again, right? Oh, it's it's unfortunate because you you're wary of the fact that there might be a nitro cell downstairs. But last killer used his nitro cell. You just have to avoid any information at that point. Heck, you can go on top of the the table in CCTV, the little one that you know when you punch out the the radio and you put the maestro cat vault on there, plant on there, just somewhere where you can't get shot through the floor, somewhere where a nitro cell isn't going to do the damage, and just try and stick, trying to hide as best as you okay, can. But ultimately, it just wasn't enough. They walked into where there was information to be given to the defenders and just, well, shoot through the floor. It, it's just as effective if you're on a soft surface. And well, that's how they pick up the round yet again. Guardian Alpha's going to be feeling a little bit robbed in some of these rounds, but you can't focus too hard on that. You just have to keep looking forward as, you know, if you lose your mental game, you, you can't afford to do it. it. It's a death sentence. And, well, they have to look at their next attack. And they have two more attacks before they swap onto their defensive half. And you want to be hitting that half with a decent enough scoreline. I mean... You want to be trying to hit a 3-3 here as Guardians Alpha, trying to clean up some of these mistakes you've made in previous rounds. But it is the first time we're seeing Jim and Bedroom, so how are they going to choose to attack onto this? We'll have to wait and see, but I'm expecting them to take control of that cash and server early, just so that those windows can't be used against them. That is a definitely a key point for this round, taking onto that cash, going in for a con wall, and then opening up that double main wall, which we do see. Mm. On the side and doing a split take. So that is what I see from Guardians Alpha. But if you look on the side of Goldies here, they have a very strong hold towards this cash side. It's very much set up to hold cash, to hold CCTV here. There is only the one Mai though of D7 who is towards that side. So Nyon is going to open the wall here with the thermite charge. I don't think there was actually, no, there's no denial on the side of Goldini's here. Last killer does get the kill onto Jemis. So that is the thinker down. That's the LMG. That is the heels from the side of Guardian Alpha. Already gone off the board. So Goldini's definitely in an advantage there, as there is no refrag. Just a free kill. On this wall from Jacuzzi being opened up now by the attack will give them access to that main stairs and more importantly short passageway into gym through the doorway which is a definitely a popular plant spot if you can get behind that workout bench thumbs on that castle looking to try and use these long angles that are now being opened up maybe to take some peeks out onto that breach to see what they can find the thermite opening up the walls around them I believe that's inside of construction 
just again to give them another long line of sight that they can watch as they attack as they're dancing around inside of sight they do still have that mad advantage here pyro neon yep. watching Ooh. for that window there we go he can be rewarded for his patience on with the kill and he'll actually get a second i don't know how he gets away with that but the, sh the missed shots from the first yuri finds one with the f2 as well little f2 merchant onto thumbs and well gonna find yet another onto icox and that's the last two kills falling in very quick succession there just to bring the round home for guardians alpha and that's a big round for them here as they go up to th well they're two three down it's three but down. it's it's a big one how has that how is that oh my god i'm just surprised by that 2k towards that cctv side there playing on highway getting the first kill was good yes but still managing i don't know how d7 didn't get the kill towards that um highway side there Golu. I mean, he just, I don't say, Neon's just cracked. He just looks away, turns back, <laughs> flicks on the head, finds the shot. Fragmite all the way. But now, this is this is the interesting one, right? Church and Arsenal room. Another round in which you could argue they should have won. Defenders they had a good start. They knew what they were doing. And you've got to give Guardians Alpha a lot of credit here. These opening in the rounds for them are very well rehearsed, it seems like. They know exactly what they're doing. They're very good at finding out these roamers. Last Killer has had a difficult time in some of these rounds making a meaningful impact early on on his roams, right? You're looking at the last time he was top floor. He got caught out inside of, um, inside of server upstairs on the top floor. He got forced back to red. Even with his rotation, he found the first pick. But the, the drops were being watched. If he goes into garage, there's someone waiting for him. If he goes down red, well, there was the Carly waiting for him. Maybe he could try to run through construction, just continue to hide. But, you know, it's still hard to drop back down. It's still hard to escape from Guardians Alpha the way they're setting themselves up. It's just making sure they're a little bit more clinical in the dying seconds. And I feel like I've said that a lot because it's just the, it's the only thing they're really slipping up in, but it's cost them heavily. Oh, well, first kill, as you were saying, last killer there, getting the down onto Itchy, but Itchy is picked back up from that thinker charge here. So, a good start from the side of Goldings, already putting the player down towards low health, but we can't really talk much about as both these t both these players will be towards full health on the later of this round. But I think, as you were saying about this Rome game, it's definitely a lot easier for bottom floor. You can, you can stall a lot of time towards top, and we do see Guardians Alpha pushing one. I think that's only one player from strip side here, Golu. I think the rest are pushing towards that garage and CCTV side. Yeah, that's Yuri on that Habana. Just waiting to see if there's an option to get towards that bar hatch, try and open up into Moto, give themselves access to church, which is, you know, a really nice way of attacking onto this site. The two ways really, you go for the kitchen hatch, or you want to take control of that blue and use that uh, the church doorway from Moto to try and sneak down the bomb. And I mean, Either way, you want to try and get blue, and we haven't really seen Guardians Alpha prioritize blue at all on the last time they attacked this site. Maybe they'll end up going towards it this time, but the first swing comes in, the Oryx oh. go and the shot onto Neon, we're able to run back down, and well, those Kona stations are back off cooldown, and that's the power of just that, just the, the, the sustain that you get, right? Oryx yep. back on to full HP, the last killer back onto full HP, and they've taken gunfights against their opponents. The Finker off the board as well means no more healing for the side of the attackers. Look at this cheeky play into the secret. One betting on the stairs, the other prone behind it, so that if they check it, they get caught out on the other angle. You'll love to see it. I mean, it's basically just a switch and bait here. You focus on the one player, it will be last killer in this place, and you can just have that Jaeger pop up last minute and be like, oh, here I am, and get the easy kill. A very aggressive angle here coming out from uh, Cox here, just trying to get any sort of player. He just misses the head of the attack inside there, and Goldini's definitely have a very big advantage for this round Golu. They haven't got any sort of setup here. They're not going to get into dirt here as D7's got such a good power position with that shield. With the three smoke canisters still on the board here with 30 seconds left. He can literally just deny any sort of push on the side of Guardians here. So what are they going to do here Golu? Well, I don't know. It's going to be hard to figure out. They've got that kitchen hatch open, which gives them an option. The frag grenade well placed down towards dirt. Well, you're not going to be the one to get the kill, but Kaz will with that AK-12. The toxic babe's going to go off. That's going to disgruntle them from pushing down this hatch. Z7 able to find the frag onto Yuri. That's one of the presents. Well, removed his thumbs. Looking for a flank. The Malusians had a sight. Finds two thumbs upstairs. Finds the last. And, well, 
Goldenings, they will finish this half 4-2 up, and that's a strong flank from the Jaeger to put this one to bed. Goldinis, a strong advantage now going on to their attacks. Yeah, I, I, I actually like that round for Goldies, and I think that was the only round they definitely, definitely with 100% confidence deserve to win. Uh, obviously, the last three we know were perfect clutches. Nothing, they do deserve this 4-2 lead here, Golu, but that, oh, round, that round was definitely 100% no questions asked A Goldinis round. Beautiful to get the first frag, and then the Thunderbird is just... It's way too OP if you have them all towards sight. You can take these aggressive gunfights and you can get the kills. We saw the Kali was already down quite low health, and then the Thinker died, but he did he Defenders did use all of his boosts on towards that Kali before he died. So I mean, yes, it's a waste towards utility side to use it so early into the round and then to die. But it was just a beautiful round there from Goldinis. And now the heart, these roles have swapped. We have Guardians Alpha on the defensive side here. And they have chose to go towards that bottom floor site here. They are reinforcing all the hatches here, Golu. So I'm going to assume doing something similar to what Goldinis did, which is a top floor roam, trying to waste as much time as we can. But we do see Last Killer's drone towards the strip side, Golu. So maybe we can see a strip side push here from Goldinis. It would be interesting. I, I feel like there's not a lot of advantage for going for a heavy strip-sided push though, right? And the reason for that is just you don't get access to a ton of space because of your strip push. You're normally going for that push with a single person just to deny the rotation up main stairs. Maybe you can sneak them up towards bathroom and catch off an unaware defender. But we'll have to see if they're already focusing towards this basement. They've got the Capital in play, which is interesting because Capital you'll often see used on this map for rafters, right? You take control of rafters. Using it on the basement is a little more interesting. There's definitely some spots where if you can land one of those asphyxiation bolts down towards some of these boxes where you commonly see defenders hiding and lurking away, well, that's going to be very helpful for you. The frag grenades are sent deep on down. They're able to catch both of them exploded. They must have been able to catch out that shield. The first smoke being shot on out. So is that Exorciation Bolt trying to give them some cover, trying to give them an advantage here, but it's not going to dissuade Yuri at all. There's the second smoke as well, Pyro. So much utility and well, nothing for it. No, I mean, there's only one Firebolt here, and that does take a lot of damage towards Yuri here. He's on 50 health, and Goldinis are going to take towards Dirt here. They are going to get control of that shield, and Yuri's going to have to play very patiently here. Wait for them to hop over the shield, because they can't destroy it here. And he hears the drone coming out, but Icox does get the kill onto Yuri there. Bait, definitely use that drone as a bait there, Golu. Well, yeah, just having two players is so instrumental. Now it's looking for this angle from Prone, just drawing towards the top of these boxes, looking towards the door from Blue, waiting for someone to walk into the line of sight. Patience is key here. Using that drone to gather information while the rest of the team are opening up that kitchen hatch. This is the take you want to go for now. They've been able to push back these defenders out from contesting the drop is what you really want to make sure you do thumbs looking deep on this angle waiting for a safe opportunity jam is able to find d7 though that's the not going down he was looking for a flank looking to try and stab the defenders in the back when all their attention was focused the other way and it wasn't quite enough the stun grenades coming in caught by the ADSs, but it's going to give an opportunity for this abana to drop thumbs is down getting that diffuser icox finds the kill onto kaz who's trying to swing trying to get some damage done jam is down taking a lot of damage still alive still able to play in this round thumbs restarting that the fuser trying to get it down the nitro cell being thrown but it's not going off last killer finds two jamis finding one and now it's all suddenly down to jamis he has such little hp triple kill but he can't quite find the last two and goldini's on the attack will make it work will make it stick despite everything that was thrown their way the cover was good enough yeah, definitely that early dirt push was what set that um, defense apart there. Focusing towards Goldini's pushing on that dirt, getting the early kill with 1 minute 30 left into the round. They got the hatch open very early. There's no sort of denial as we saw when Goldini's won on defense. They used that impact trick to get rid of the hatch. So having hatch open, having kitchen hatch open, having dirt control, all they needed to do there was use the players, use the, the, the vertical angles that they had to cut off any defenders who were in church, which we did see two of the defenders in church, one defender towards the uh, blue side. And if you have dirt control, you can watch blue, you can watch church, and that was an easy, 
easy drop there and a plant towards the kitchen hatch. So a good round there from Goldini's going 5-2 up, one round away from that all and very crucial match point which they need to put a lot of pressure onto Guardians Alpha here. But Golu, they haven't gone to bedroom and gym, but they have opted to go towards that CCTV and cash side. Again, what's interesting to me is that they haven't got the Cade on the board. You'll notice if you look over at Itchy's little profile on the side, that is not a change from Cade to Bandit. I'm not quite sure. Maybe if you change too late into the like last second swap, it thinks you repicked it or something. Well, that is a display bug. There is no repick for defenders. As interesting a, a theory as that would be. But yeah, I mean, we saw that when uh, Goldinis were on the defense, they were using that Cade above the walls in Garage. You throw it on rafter surface. It's very hard for the, att the attackers to get rid of. You have to basically get a frag rate up onto that balcony or get some sort of twitch drone into Garage to remove it. Going for Bandit Batteries and Mute Jammers instead, which will be susceptible to this Kali that we're seeing a lot of this game. And, I mean, you don't see a lot of that, but both of these teams finding it very valuable. They're trying to get this wall opened on up. That's too late on the trick. He's got to leave. Itchy, you're going to... Okay, he's, he's gotten out. He's gotten out. Yeah, I was I was getting very worried there from Itchy. I, I was literally in my mind being like, oh, Itchy's going to go for a Bandit trick here. And I was going to say, it's very hard to Bandit trick on this site as you have a lot of vertical. If you have control of lounge... You can't bandit trick there, but it doesn't matter. It she doesn't get the bandit trick off, and you can have D7 here on the Cali watching long angles. If you're Goldini here, your main goal here is to get into the garage side, or what we see them doing here is going for a con push. As we know, there's not a lot of people towards the side of cash here, as they're too focused on main, and we might get a push in here from Drum. But there is a proximity charge. There is gunfights going off here, Golu. And the first kill comes out from Last Killer, getting a kill onto Itchy. And that's the bandit gone here. A beautiful shot there from Yuri, just taking a lot of damage from that sledge. And yeah, it's definitely going to be a split push here. It is very helpful to have that split push, right? You give access to sight into one way, you start smacking the defenders if they swing too wide on the other. It just creates a lot of claustrophobia for them. Cox now getting into sight will get shot down by Neon from rafters, and that's going to put that diffuser down inside of sight with a very difficult way to get back to it. Brumit able to find one pick swing, actually from the sledge, able to find the second, recovers that diffuser and will start to get the plant going down. Kaz on that Jaeger finds the head of Thumbs, looking for the head of the Kali, but can't quite land the shots. DJ7 finds one. D Seven finds another, and that will be the round going in favor of the attackers. And well, look at that, Pyro. Match point. Match point, and yeah, very, very hard mental block here for Guardian Alpha to get over. They, I think they need to take a tactical uh, pause here. Work over, get the coach in, and just go over what they can do to dislodge the might of Goldinis on their attack here. But a little replay if you needed that last round. They did get... A, uh, a dual push there, which we did see. Breach being opened. The bandit trick, the bandit failed to trick the wall. And then we saw a, a CCTV window, a main breach. Getting that single con wall open, it's, it's just too much pressure for Guardians Alpha. Too many angles to watch to watch there. We did see K, 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 K4Z Kaz there on the red, who did get, I think it was a double kill, if I'm, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Golu. No, but no, I, think that, I think that was the only um I think that was the only sort of fight there that Guardians Alpha had on that round. Yeah, it's all, I don't know. It was a bit difficult. When they had that split push, I think just splitting on this top floor bomb site is so powerful, right? Because you could see with the angles that they had, you know, D7 watching with Carly on that breach, you have the construction wall opened on up, pressure being applied onto the red rotate. It's so hard for the defenders to move out of any position to take a gunfight because there's so many people watching your every angle. Everything you try and do, there's someone on the receiving end waiting for you to try it. Now though, they have to go to this top floor. They're going to the other one, gym bedroom, because they just feel that, you know what? Goldini's had our number on the last one. They knew what we, were, what we were trying to do, and they just had the answer to it. We couldn't work around it. Now we're going to extend across this top floor. We're going to try and slow down the play inside of Cash and see if we can maybe just slow Goldini's down a little bit. By slowing them down, you give yourself more opportunity in the later rounds, the dying seconds of these rounds, for them to cause mistakes. Although, you have to say, it does look like Guardians are the ones that struggle a little bit more under the pressure. 
Yeah. If you're itchy here and you know you're going to ban the trick, a little tip here for everyone in the chat. If you open up the wall, if you shotgun the wall before they enforce it, it gives you a lot It gives you a lot more sound. Sound travels differently through that wall and it allows for a much easier bandit trick here. So definitely something you can do if you are on Guardians Alpha here. If you know you're going to ban the trick and they have the castle, so it's a lot easier here. But I expect to maybe to get this bandit trick off here, but I think he's going for the wrong wall there. Oh, yes, he is. he's going for the wrong wall. Get out of there, Itchy. No, he gets Grenady from Last Killer through that drone hole and a beautiful push there from Goldinis to get that wall open. Yeah, now the sirens, the warning bells, everything is starting to ring for Guardians Alpha as there's already so much control in the hands of the attackers right next to your site from already at the top of this main stairs, looking to swing onto Neon, who's sprinting back to site, doesn't know what's coming. From finds a second, the Jaeger completely unaware inside of sight to the presence all around him. Yuri, the last standing as the triple kill comes through for the Sledge, finally able to shut them down, but it's not enough. D7 waiting and watching from the window, jumps in, watches that rotation hole, and is knowing exactly where you're coming from. And well, that was a very quick game. Goldini's showing why they're a force to be reckoned with within minor and a big three points that they picked up for themselves here today, Pyro. I mean, yeah, they did a great job. They did, uh, especially Goldini's on their attack. It was a yes. lot different yes. to their defense. Their defensive side was definitely, I thought Guardians Alpha were a bit more clinical when they were on the, um, when they, they were, when the first set of the first half of the round. Yeah. But... <sighs> If you can't defend on Clubhouse, you're not going to get rounds. And it was just a beautiful display there. I think they won um, three rounds in a row, wasn't it, Goldini's? Because it was a 4-2 split. Mm -hmm. And all three of those attacking rounds, no doubt. No doubt in anyone's mind that they, just, that they won that round. Yeah. So a nice and easy win there for Goldini's. But... <laughs> If you're looking towards the first half, it was definitely a lot closer. And I don't think yeah. Guardians Alpha deserve to lose in that manner. Yeah, the scoreline doesn't represent how close that game was. Because, like you say, three of those rounds in the first half probably should have gone the other way around. Could have been 5-1 the other way. And then, well, we have a banger on our hands. Because if they can win just one defensive round just win a defensive round on Clubhouse. That, that isn't a tall order, right? That is yep. not a difficult thing to normally they do. They secured the point, they, don't they, at that point? Exactly. They would have secured themselves at least one point. But instead, they will be walking away with nothing. Goldini's taking that three points. And, well, if we throw to an updated version of the scoreboard now that all the teams have played at least three rounds, we can see, well, Guardian Alpha looking at that, claiming the extra win. That puts them over three points up. Seventh, joint top of the leaderboard. Beautiful there from Ahead on round difference, I believe, as well. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they have plus 10 round difference, so they are on top. And Nerf Miner are just behind him. So two of the teams that I thought were definitely going to battle towards the top of the leaderboard. And it's well-deserved in Goldini's there. An absolute dominating performance on the attack there. And I'm looking forward to next week. I'm looking forward to what they can do next week. Yeah. How they will play. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see this team, again, a lot of strong players on them, a lot of good fragging potential. If they can kind of find a way to tighten up a little bit on their defenses, right? Because against a stronger team, you will be punished for some of the mistakes that they made in the first half. They were able to take advantage of the fact that they could outfrag in a lot of these positions against Goldinis. That won't, be, uh, against Guardians Alpha, that won't be true for them every time. But they can take some solace in the fact that they've claimed these three points. They've won today and they've shown they were the stronger team. They can look towards their next opponent now. Just prepare for that instead. Yeah. And I think we are actually, we are going to go into a 10 minute break here before the major game. Make sure to join us back for that game. And if anyone is wondering what that game is going to be, well, that will be Machine Soldiers versus Loud. Very much looking forward to that major game there. That's going to be an absolute banger. Rerun of the final as well. So make sure you're back for that one. This is, this is a for sure, one of the games of the season right here. Yeah, definitely between... Uh, I think maybe the game of the season might have been the game we saw yesterday, LFO Petitorium. But this is definitely one of the ones up there. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Choke. 
just choke machine soldiers here. They leave two people up top, they push down below. I mean, they're coming to West Main now, and you've got Agent here for shotgun on West Main, and Korgo just gets that kill. He gets a double kill! Oh my god, Korgo's popping off with that triple kill. Could be if Axidy would know, then boy oh boy would he be worried. Well, it's actually going to be Mr. Easter to take out Spooky. My lord! <laughs> Wait, you Dallas! Oh. Wait, you boy, oh boy! What? Why have a cumul dream bad about oh this one God. for you, Suka? <laughs> I am absolutely amazed. Like, yo, know, great congrats to Mr. Easter stuff, but yes. Has to get very aggressive. Oh. Oh. Did spot out the player out there, and Oxy D is able to take down Joe. This could be the perfect time for this one, he's just prepped it just so that when the player's melee is expecting something, they get something completely different. When they just come through, but we'll be able to escape, and if you look up there, here's Coinsold taking out the depth head, and Dallas wow. will fall finally on from Oxy D, as he already has his third kill up on this round. It's all down to Mr. Easter for two for gatekeepers. Yeah. Who are they? It's gonna be ideal, although it did, did force back the attack just for a little bit longer. A lovely shot by Doki, though. That's exactly what he wants. He's gonna be able to fall back with the rotation. Gonna leave it. Yeah, gonna leave it open. He's not gonna play around the cover to try and hide his fallback. So he doesn't get caught off by the attack now. Gotta be careful with these long angles. We saw what Bisu were able to do with it. Quick trade going through. Doki able to re-pick that kill up for his team. Oh, and as well as finding another one onto Ethan's, that's a lovely yeah, triple kill for Doki in this round. So it's full white flashed it, but the smoke is just denying any sort of push from Packet Bar. He's still in that area, and Doki just finishes up with a, a 4k from Doki that round. Indicator that someone is doing something cheeky, something funny, but JTT finds the first pick. He gets an injure as well. He'll secure that kill. I believe the fingers are trying to pick themselves up. He doesn't really force the actually open. Did he find himself third? No way! He swung hit fire with the SMG 11 to make it four and
You can tell. You can tell.
You can tell.
Hello guys and welcome back to week three for the final game of this week. It is the major match and it is Machine Soldiers Academy versus Loud. And more importantly, it is also a rematch of the season six finals that was played between these two teams right here, Golo. And if we cast our minds back, the result of that was Machine Soldiers won 3-1 versus Loud there. Now, can you please remind us of that game, Gurley? And what are your thoughts about this game going into today? Well, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because we've had a little bit, just a, a little bit of time little since bit. that game was played out. But yeah, Machine Soldiers Academy were the ones that took it last time these two teams faced each other. Loud, after their great run through that minor bracket in the minor division, went 7-1. Able to come seven one and one, I should say, able to bounce up into the finals all the way. Won that first map seven three, lost the next three seven three. Interestingly, right? Yep. This is their this is their opportunity to bounce back, but we'll have to wait and see what maps we kind of get brought out because obviously being a best of five in the final, they played quite a few of the maps and none of the maps they played have been removed. It was coastline that got the axe. The rest have all stayed the same. We've just added two new ones in. Whether they'll be brought into the repertoire will be interesting to find out. But I'm looking forward to this one. I'm excited to see these two teams back at it again. Two high-caliber squads. Yeah, obviously I wasn't casting back then, but so it'll be my first time actually seeing these two. But I bet three. it's going to be an absolute cracker. But more importantly, the map bans for today's game. Now... This is a beat best out of two. So the two maps that we are playing today, Golu, are Jumbo, Chalet, and Villa. Now, whew, I actually like Chalet and Villa as two maps here. Yeah. 
They're both very nice maps. I, More you know, exactly. Chalet's, Chalet's become quite a popular one recently, and I think I think the fact that it was like a, it was in the the competitive map pool during SI way back when was like a big boost in its popularity. Teams saw how it was being played, and it kind of grew and grew from there. Villa has always been a staple map. I've loved Villa since the day it was added. It's been near and dear to my heart. It's in a lovely, lovely setting of that wonderful Italian countryside. Nice little vineyard. It's got everything that one could want, including some brilliant opportunities for excellent siege gameplay. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Now, the predictions. More importantly, what our staff and community do think of this game? We'll go into our staff vote first, as that's obviously the more important vote. I mean, come on. So, staff vote for is today it, is actually, to be fair, it's it's quite close. Ooh. Well, well, I would say close. It's uh, 87% <laughs> for oh. MS and 13% for Loud. So, I say close as it was close to last game's predictions that we saw in a minor. Oh. <laughs> so, it's, it's close in the same sense that we on Earth are close to the sun. Yes. <laughs> Yes, other, other galaxies are very, very far away from the sun, but as on the Earth, yeah, we are very in close. The in the sense that the prediction is within 0 to 100%, it's quite close. Yeah, that, that, I think that's the most important thing about the prediction, is between 0 and 100%. But very, very heavy favourites here, machine, mm. machine Soldiers. Obviously, the winners from Season 6, as we just said yep. previously. So maybe that is also bolstering up, giving them that mental game for today, that advantage. But now the community vote, which oh. is actually a lot closer than what people would think. It's uh, 55% for MS, okay, 42% for Loud, and the 3% draw. Interesting. So a lot closer than what the staff think. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to see how it's going to unfold, because, well, if I'm not mistaken, we're jumping straight into the first map, Chalet. Now, what's interesting to me, right, as we, as we look... To this chalet game that we're about to jump into last time these two teams played they did play it in the grand final they played chalet and well machine soldiers academy won it 7-3 that was starting on attack as well now chalet attack is obviously a, one of those maps where it, it is a little bit more comfortable to play on the attack but we're starting off with the ban of the flores here pyro and i you know what, personally, I think Flores ban it just makes too much sense on Chalet. Definitely. Maybe you feel differently, but just the amount of windows oh. that you have, just to, to jump in, destroy the deployable shields, destroy the gadgets, and clear out so much space so quickly is unparalleled. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and no ban. <laughs> I guess Machine Soldiers are very much trolling this game with that no ban there, but Flores, I definitely agree with you. And I think Flores, it, one of the best uses is that piano shield that we do see quite a lot. Yeah. MS now bringing out the mirror ban, which, yeah, it's very strong for that bar gaming room. Not so much for top floor. Yeah, oopsie in the chat from Adrian. I think, I think they've realized they, they, haven't, they haven't banned anything. Um, the ban's going to be finished off then with the Cade. And, I mean, what's interesting, you're looking at this ban... Looking at what's been taken off the table, the last time they played, the grand final, it was almost identical bands. Loud, choosing to get rid of the Flores and the Cade. Machine Soldiers Academy, choosing to get rid of the Mirror. More, more importantly, they chose to ban an attacker. They got that Thatcher off the board. But leaving it in is going to be interesting. I, I wonder if they're going to use it. So far, it hasn't been lined up for them. But it's one of those operators where, well, with the, with the repick now, you can change anyone that you want to to anyone else. Maybe we see a change or not, but... Twitch going on to that Thatcher because quite possibly it makes more sense. I don't think it's actually useful for the master bedroom and office side as below the double wall is actually soft destructible from the lobby area. Mm. So I don't think Thatcher's too big of a miss or too big an operator that you do need on this site. I think the only site it's useful for is your snowmobile garage. Yeah, and, and maybe the um, dining room area for that double wall towards the uh, lobby side. But obviously that can be getting from the vertical play. As on Chalet, there is a lot of soft destruction 
you can see from the observer's view here, mostly all of the top floor is self-destructible with that wooden floor. And there is a few bit towards the piano and um, towards that bathroom side, which is not which is not destructible. But that's one of the things I like about Chalet, is the soft destruction available. Yeah, and you can see that, well, loud on their defense, clearly value that soft destructibility. They're going downstairs, setting themselves up inside a dining room, and that's to give them the ability to contest these roamers downstairs and watch out for these vertical nades. There aren't, well, too many nades. Obviously, four is quite a lot, but you'll see teams go absolutely crazy with it and start bringing, like, eight nade comps and things like that. So, you know, four, a little bit more within reason. You've got that... Finker, you've got the Yana, the two standard entry duo, and well, they're clearing out towards Mezzanine very early on, making sure that there's no one lurking around downstairs inside of Bar Gaming. There was earlier on, but they believe that they have chased the Aruni out of that position. They want to double check though, obviously, but for the time being, they should be safe. Lozmu just making sure that they have all of the rubble off the table, and that will give them a little bit of a cleaner line of sight as well as giving himself this opportunity to play the advanced angle. The shots coming in, though, indicate that the attack might be expecting this sort of higher up peak. Yeah, this position here is a very strong. If you swing out, you can stop anyone towards that double double wind, double double door that we see on top towards top of Meza. And you can get a sight line into box and into library if you are careful. Now, Hebby has opened up the wall. One minute 40 left into the round. A very early, very early opening there of that um, double wall there, Golo. So we will expect a push coming in within 40 to 30 seconds here, hopefully. Well, Miller's still holding on to this breach, holding on to the piano shield just to try and slow down any attack. That Flores off the table means it's going to be a little bit harder to dislodge this shield that Jaeger is hugging onto. You've got the laser gates to burn out, and they will start to go the flashbangs coming through to try and burn these ADSs. The Adrenal Surge, the boost, give a little bit more HP while they clear out this corner. The first kill for Baby Shark will be refragged by Steno, finding Millies. That's the Jaeger off the table. That's the piano player gone. Steno's jumped on inside of sight. Creeds will fall. Steno will now fall very quickly to the mute as well. He's starting to fall apart a little bit for the attack. Superstar takes some damage. Adrian trying to watch this piano doorway but has to move into sight. We'll get the injure onto the smoke as the canister doesn't quite land on where the is dropping that case down. The plot will go behind the half wall and now Adrian taking this forward position, trying to land the shots, taking damage from all over, will be felled by Mythox, who now, well, they've left themselves in this three versus one post-plant situation. Super Sloth all alone to get the job done. Yeah, very aggressive post-plant there from the Adrian and the defense are just able to pick up the kill and finally get the kill onto Sloth and a nice easy clutch out there and retake from the defensive side and that is the first round going towards Loud and talking more about that round Golu that there was a refrag for the first set of kills there and what I noticed from both the teams instead of going for more a passive stance they both got aggressive Loud managed to get two kills in quick succession mm. and forcing it into that four versus two situation the attack, and I think it was actually the thinker of Adrian, managed to push into piano and get the kill towards bathroom, which allowed for a th three versus two. Pushing into office, they got the plant behind half wall. But after that post plant situation, the thinker got, in my opinion, a bit too aggressive and paid with his life, putting it into a three versus one situation. And you know what happens from there. Difficult on there, right? Because the white sofa inside a site, you can't jump up onto. You can't get on top of that sofa. Which means, you know, on some sites, you might try and hide in the corner, just try and crouch in and let the defenders, like, flood past you and shoot them in the back, using that trigger discipline to just wait them out and bait them in. But that wasn't really going to be able to happen. You want to try and take those gunfights in that two versus three as well, just to bring those numbers back to a more sort of advantageous position. Because you think about how many openings there were on Sloth at the end there, right? In the yep. one versus three, he has to contend with the breach, which has been opened up. The piano double door, which was what was drawing his attention away, actually. It was Lazmu on that mute. And then you've also got to be careful of the fact that they can run out onto Fluke Balcony and shoot you from that window. So, it, it, it's hard to figure out, and as the defender in a, in a three versus one, you should never be losing that, right? You always just push together, and that's exactly what they did. Now, though, they're going to be downstairs just below the dining and kitchen room site, and, well, they're just holding upstairs once again, and this is the beauty of playing sites that have uh, another commonly held position above them, right? Is You just double up and play very similarly, because the attackers are forced to deal with your upstairs presence first. 
I think as we said in the uh, pre-game show as well, or at the start of the first round, there is a lot of soft destruction. So if you're MS here, you're going to take top floor. And it's all about loud, preventing and using as much time for MS to push into top floor. But Latimo's taken a lot of damage here for in the first one minute of the round. I think that was just a wayward push there, just getting a bit too aggressive. And he's taken a lot of damage for his troubles here. But MS are going to have to work quite quickly to get control into Piano, to get control into Master Bedroom. We do see the hold with the shield in towards that uh, small office area, which is going to be an absolute massive push, an absolute massive power position for the side of um, Loud here. The OS is a, a good operator for the site, Golu. Yeah, Osha is a great operator, and the fact that you have that shield which you can drop down, you know, you can pick it up, use it to uh, like they are now to clear this space upstairs, because you want the vertical inside of office, and that's so you can first of all remove the mute gems from the breach. But secondly, you can deny positions in these cheeky corners like Smoke is trying to contest at the moment. He's being shot through this floor and just being forced back further towards the back of the site and that's what you need to do you need to deny them from playing these close angles but then you want to play a post plant from above because it's a lot harder to contest from beneath up through those metal railings but just because of how far away they are you know the, the recoil can, can just jagger into them and it makes it so hard to fight the wall being opened up now in office and soon getting that downstairs one as well i believe that's what they're getting sorted out now pyro and well with a minute left no one yet dead but a lot of damage dealt to the defense Ooh, first kill there coming out from Matox there with the Aruni. And now Loud Esports can sort of slow down here and wait for MS to push. The defense are going to take their time and fall back towards side. But we Bomb do see Baby Shark here on the road in Snowmobile. Can he push up towards Attackers the jungle stairs and get the kill? I believe it's on to Asian, who is on those lower <laughs> corridors towards me. Position. The surge going out as 30 seconds hits the mark. That's the spot for the smoke to start tucking out those canisters. The flank shut down. Creed's finds another pick onto the Rooney upstairs as well. And this is going to be an opportunity to send the floodgates in to charge into sight and try and get this plot down. Adrian taking a hefty chunk of damage, but will find the smoke for their troubles. Lazmu now trying to find a way to fight back from split. But Adrian, a triple kill in the round. He's not giving up any ground this time around, and he's going to find that kill. It's all left to Millismo upstairs and well the Jaeger and the one versus four has a lot of work cut out for them one more adrenal surge which could come back if it reaches off cooldown however the first fight goes in the favor of the Jaeger Creed's goes down the second they're playing around this Osa shield but it's not enough super Sloth finds the angle and makes it work yeah very nice um, post plant situation there from the attackers just knowing that the Jaeger is top floor and that is a one versus four situation. He can't push down. There's too many angles and too many players for the side of MS here for him to do anything. And yeah, that is one one in this situation. Going into this third round though, Golu, we do see another change up from the defensive side of Loud here. They don't go back to that kitchen dining site. Instead, they go to bar gaming here. And the trick with bar gaming is to hold into library to hold into mezzanine to Defenders have that shield of top of jungle and if you're the attackers here golu how are you going to push this site well you're going to tr just try and take that office control first of all you want to open up the wall give yourself the long angle from from where that half wall is inside of office so you can get rid of that shield at the top of the staircase because well when that shield is gone, it makes it a lot easier to push up because no one can contest this long corridor that you can see right there. You see Arabu just already chucking that shield there. You know they're going to be playing around this position. You, you, you need to clear this space. But ultimately, when you're looking to plant, you need that top floor, right? You clear out library, you force the defenders out of their comfortable positions. After there, you got a couple options. I mean, some people will swear by the half wall inside of... Um, inside of library, uh, not library, inside of lounge, and, and, but gaming's area. Other people will just say there are too many good spots inside a bar where you can slip in from lobby and just sneak it down in the corner with coverage from your team. So it's really a bit of a, a flavor of the team when it comes down to that. Yeah, Baby Shark getting very aggressive on these spawn peaks here. He, I think he's actually listened to your commentary here, Golu, as the attacking team of MS are pushing towards the office and master bedroom side here taking control into piano and what you said earlier was they needed to open the the main by half wall wasn't it and start putting the pressure 
onto the players playing in mezzanine and that Wamai who's playing on that top jungle area here. But this Jaeger can do so much damage from this position if he plays his time right. Yeah, it's all about timing, right? Because the whole purpose of a Jaeger and my comp is just to stall out. It's to defend your utility, but you stall out the attackers in removing it. You play that clock so efficiently, and you add in the Aruni to the mix, right? Yeah. Again, this is another operator who has a gadget which just catches projectiles, denies you utility, and forces you to play around time gates as well, right? You're forced to use it up within 30 seconds, or the defenders, if you haven't cleared out the position, can just reactivate it again. Well, Mai continuing to throw out those discs. He's got two in pocket, which is quite interesting, but how can they use this EMP? Trying to bounce it to roll down to catch everything, deny any protection for that shield, and we'll see as the grenade gets bounced in, that is wonderful utility of that EMP. It denied everything, and it will come to con in a couple seconds, but the thing it's protecting is gone. Mwah, beautiful. Oh, yeah, I love that chef kiss there. And that is 1 minute 20, and that is that already that shield going down here. So if you are MS here, you need to get rid of this top mezzanine player, which has just happened there. First pick going on to Mizumiya with that Jaeger, and that's top mezzagon. And Matteo here on that Thunderbird is going to come under a lot of pressure. A nice kill there, but a beautiful refrag from the smoke player playing on that gaming hatch here. But more importantly, MS has got the map control they need to start pushing down and start applying pressure to the defenders the who are playing below. But, 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 Pyro, we can't overlook the sledge of the one off the table. Adrian will also fall to the smoke once again, who's been an absolute monster in this round, brings it back to the 3-3. And 30 seconds left, no sledge on the table to open up these holes. They shouldn't be forced to use what's already been opened up by the defense. Creed's opening up this this doorway to give them that opportunity to walk in. But let's move. Playing downstairs seems to be the difference. It's really finds the first pick. That's the fuser going down as well. Heavy falls and Habana is off the board. Creed now has to try and find a way to recover it with 12 seconds left. On the clock. It's not going to be enough time. Supermoth may find one, but it's going to quickly be refragged out. Aruni with a double kill to bring loud the round. That was beautiful play from that player playing towards that snowmobile garage. Killing the Habana just sets off a chain reaction, which allows the Aruni to get that 2k there, Golu. Beautiful play from Loud. Beautiful comeback from being what it was um, a four versus three situation. And if you ignore the beautiful kill which Smoke got there, they got map control relatively early on to the, into that round. If you remember back to one minute 30 seconds into that round with that Thatcher on the roof getting rid of the Jaeger that was defending that jungle shield. I mean, that was a beautiful play in itself and sort of Defenders protect justifies the why they didn't ban anyone on their attack almost, you could say. In, uh, that's, that's one way to look at it. I I feel like there's there's always something you're not going to bring, right? Like, yep. let's say, the, the, okay, a no ban is never really opportune, no. right? Because you'll you'll know there's always like okay, in, for my mind, right? There are there are three operators who if you don't know who to ban, you but ban. you don't play them. Ban one of these, Capital, mm -hmm. because if a team has a pocket strap with the Capital, it can be very strong, it can be very annoying to deal with. Ying. The same thing again. Pocket strats, inconvenient to deal with. Candelas can be annoying. The last one's Monty. If you don't have a, if you don't have a strong Monty player, and you don't think you're going to be using it, you might as well just ban it. Get it off the table. Deny that option to your opponent. A no ban is never worth doing. But what do I know? Helios made it work. Maybe the machine soldiers can make it work too. It was clearly an act. I think they said oopsie, right? They, they meant to ban something. What that was, well, I guess we'll never know. But Superstoff going to be the one to start opening up this fluke balcony window just to try and see if anyone's going to overextend on this top floor. Once again, attacking onto kitchen dining room and, well, the top floor is first on the mark. It's interesting though, Pyro, because they play quite far back. Oh, Adrian's going down. When's he gone down? The Ivy. No way Baby Shark's been able to escape. He just runs back down to bottom floor like nothing happens there. And that's all Red Heat Adrian off the board. Your two frag grenades, your gone six, your LMG, and the Absolutely. Adrenal Surge already gone out. I can't say how many times that Thinker has died first, how many times I brought up the amount of utility that that one operator brings. And look how much health Baby Shark has saved off there. Barely taking any damage there. And that's a free kill from the Sound of Loud here. And with more plays, it's going to be a lot harder for Machine Soldiers here to push this top floor 
to get the map control they need. Well, shots coming through. Heavy finds the pick. That's Mythox going down. The, well, Aruni off the table. That's upstairs presence being reduced. And you can start to push a little bit further across. The breach open on up now as well. Into dining means that you have to be a little bit more careful as one of these defenders inside of sight. Is there going to be some long angles being drawn from the back of lobby? Creed's on that Osa is another one. Is this wall being opened up by Seno from above? This is really nice use of that buck where traditionally or normally you'd expect to see the sledge for this kind of vertical play. But using that skeleton key in the range that it provides you just to reach a little bit deeper into sight for these walls. Yeah, and just getting rid of any sort of mute jammers there, allowing Attackers for a lot less user. pressure to be put on towards that thermite here. Oh, but man, brilliant, brilliant patience here from the Jaeger, who could get a free kill onto the sledge here. As, yeah, there's no one here to support this attacking player, Golu. Not that I can see. Finds him on the drone, though. So that will give some awareness to... Steno, he's, he's joined upstairs, he has to be a little bit careful. He's still playing around these holes that he's made for himself as the smoke canisters are starting to go off, dissuading Creed's from walking in for the plant. No explosives, oh sorry, you've got the, the nitro cell still in the pocket of Newt downstairs inside a split. So that could really stop a plant here if they try and use that Osa shield as cover. Steno now looking for the pick onto Mismo. Will find it, which clears up a lot of space inside of sight. But 14 seconds for this plant to go down. The swing from the smoke will be enough. Steno will find the refrag though as he drops the hatch. Time is ticking away. No one's getting that plant down. Heavy picks it up. But everyone's falling around him. Lazmu, the last alive. Heavy getting that diffuser down behind the bomb chassis. Behind the dining room table. The cover from Superstop. Not quite coming through. Time the plant will go down. He gets, he managed to save the sound. Mute looking around. Bobbing and weaving. Looking for this doorway. Looking for the space to go in. Now has to play this post plant against the Two attackers who've spread apart. They're drawing long angles between them, forcing the mute into the middle of these two attackers. Super Sloth takes the opening exchange. A little bit of damage received. So little health on this mute, and that will be exposed by Heavy landing the shot from inside of Kitchen. Yeah, can I just say a round of applause there to Steno on that top floor. Gets the kill with 20 seconds left onto that Jaeger, and then just goes straight onto the hatch in, in Master Bedroom to get the kill onto the player in playing who was playing in Kitchen, which allowed MS to get that diffuser down and win that post-plant situation there. So a very good round from Steno there, which I believe he definitely won him that round there, Golu. No doubt. Yeah, big plays for the buck, especially catching that smoke off as well, because... Well, the whole point of having that Osa shield is you can pop it, prop it up in a position a little bit further forwards where those smoke canisters aren't going to land when they throw them back, right? We yep. saw where those clouds were being emitted from, right? It was behind that dick dining Defense room counter, which is what you, you're expecting. You're expecting that bulletproof bomb chassis to be the selected cover of choice for the planter. No, machine soldiers trying to change things up a bit. Didn't work that time around. The cover wasn't quite there. But Steno found the refrag, and that's what counts. Yeah, I think, as you said before, definitely the smokes. I think even you said in your play-by-play um, -play casting at the end there that he was planted behind that bomb chassis. So it is definitely the most predictive spot, but I like what MS did there, pushing towards that backside. But going on to this round, more importantly, we do see a master hold here coming out from Loud. And if you remember back to the start, the first ever round, Loud did go to this top floor site and they did win. Attackers must locate in a convincing fashion. So, hoping for the similar sort of situation here. We see the same strats coming out with the shields on piano, with the holds in towards Master. But what surprises me is right next to where Lasmo is right now, with those pro holds on the left side of that Solarium wall. Yeah, I mean, I think the idea is you just try and give yourself a little bit more space. It it is interesting though, because like these prone holes, if you draw a longer angle, right? I mean, this is how angles work. The further you are away from the prone hole, the more you can see under it, just because you have more space to kind of for your, your line of sight to balance out. So playing right up against them, you're not going to be seeing anything. You're being looking straight into a wall. Definitely a little bit strange to see what they're going to try and obtain from that. Mismo playing on this piano shield once again. The prisma's being set up just to deny some information. Or, sorry, I should say gather some information, right? You shoot in, you get hit by the prisma, your ping's coming out, and it helps you contest onto those window players if you want to. But it also just gives you information on what operator they're playing, which can be just as valuable now that you no longer have that reveal phase to see what might be brought to the table from the attack. That will actually give you an idea of how machine soldiers are going to push. If you see, which we did see there, then 
be able to see the Osa. They know they're going to push one more that uh, piano side. Oh, Lasmo oh. getting two frags there. Takes a lot of damage, but yeah, he actually did down that Thatcher player there. First kill comes out of Steno, though, onto Arrow Bow of the smoke. So that's any sort of denial already out of the equation here, Golu. Yeah, you don't want to be the first one to drop as that smoke. Those gas canisters, well, no longer very useful. The EMP being used once again to great effect as Steno finds yet another pick on that Osa. Heavy takes a hefty chunk of damage, being brought to very low on the health. The frag grenade from Adrian bounces true and right. Mizmo is going to go down. Well, this opens up a lot of space now for this plant. Heavy gonna go for it. The angle from behind though, Baby Shark on the flank. Adrian finds Mythox inside of sight. It's all down to the alibi who will be felled by Creed's very quickly on the turnaround. Could have been something there, but not enough players inside of sight to really give you that opportunity when you hit the flank. I mean, it was a beautiful grenade kill there coming out from the side of Machine Soldiers. And getting the early 2 and 3k, pushing it down to a 5 versus 2. If you include that grenade there, it just gave him the free map control. I was going to say a beautiful flank there coming out from, I think it was, who was it on the Baby Shark on the Avuni? That, that could have played in a bigger part in that round if a lot of players from Loud didn't die without any sort of refrag coming along. Because the main thing with that round is machine, machine soldiers got kills that were untraded from the side of Loud there, which allowed them to take a massive man advantage and win that round relatively easy there, Goli. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, just machine soldiers corrected their mistake from the last time around, right? They took good yeah. early control without risking too much. They found these opening picks. Supersloth got injured, but was able to be recovered. The cover from Adrian to make sure that the, the mute who got that down wasn't able to capitalize on that opportunity, wasn't able to kind of grab that kill before it was rescued. Now though, they have to attack back onto Bar, and we saw, well, last time they tried to do this, Baby Shark inside of sight was able to get a lovely double kill to bring the round home, and a big part of what went wrong for them was that they lost their sledge early on and couldn't utilize this vertical play. This time around, there just is no sledge. They just haven't brought a vertical play, no, no buck either. Um, no, no breaching charges either, so I wonder what they're gonna do here. Are they gonna go for a horizontal push, maybe from, um, trophy side and try and enter through the bottom of uh, bar corridor i'm assuming that or maybe a push from below well here's yeah, the thing right I, I still think you have to take above yeah if you don't take above the defenders can play it anyway it's just interesting that you're not giving yourself the opportunity to abuse that the first of those shook shock drones gonna be uh, shot out there by the thunderbird Oh, first oh. kill. Sloth onto Baby Shark. So no more late game flanks coming around there. Mm. And limited damage really taken from Machine Soldiers. As you have Adrian there with the Thinker with two boosts left. And <laughs> Baby Shark asking for HP. Maybe uh, he got a bit of siege there. Maybe looking for what could have been a kill here. But, I mean, there's only four grenades here coming out of MS. So are they going to do... Oh, actually, Golo, here's a good question. Are they going to do a similar strategy with that Thatcher to get rid of the Jaeger the ADS is being placed on? Yeah, they've been using these, these EMPs to immense effect. And I, I love the way they've been doing it, rolling it down the hill to make sure that it lands in the right spot, so that it gets all the cover. Steno finds the kill onto Mismo. That's the Jaeger going down. And Steno finds himself a double kill. That's Lazmu, the player who was lurking around inside the basement the first time around they were on this site. Now he's playing inside of this kitchen corridor, going around to the lobby. The explosion's going off all around. The smoke has to be a little bit more cautious than the site now as the window in the doorway from lobby has been opened on up mythox trying to fall back will be felled and it's left stand with the triple kill it's left smoke in the one versus five and a flawless round for machine soldiers as they continue to purge loud esports yeah a beautiful 3k from steno as you said pushing below with that twitch that f2 merchant the f2 is such a good weapon that if you take any sort of close range gunfight Especially if you have a hollow. I see a lot of players using a hollow on the F2 now. Using Twitch as more of a close range fighter, especially after if you lose your shock drones quite early on. It's it's definitely an op you can use with the high rate of fire in a close range situation. But a beautiful flawless round there for MS. And that is a 4-2 lead here, Golu. Going into the first half of this first game here. Now...
machine soldiers will be on defense here. And I, I'm pretty sure uh, we discussed what type of map Chalet Attackers was before this. And it's quite an even matchup for both attack and defender side. It's not either one. It doesn't favor attackers, it doesn't favor defenders. So what is what do you think will happen on this goalie? Will you, do, do you think Loud Esports will bring this back with a 4-2 on their attacks? Or do you think MS, Machine Soldiers here, will win and will do well on their defensive strategy here? It's, it's, it's a funny one, right? Because we, we can say what we want. I think the, the big thing for me here is, is make sure Loud aren't getting too many flashbacks, right? This is, this is the same trend that we saw before. 4-2 first split on attack for Machine Soldiers. It has finals energy written all over it. Let's just hope that th their attacks have refined a little bit since then. You already see Mismo droning downstairs, being chased all the way around by this mute who's hungry for the drone, doesn't want to let it escape them. The big thing for me for Loud is making sure they take space in a well-timed manner. But you look at Machine Soldier setup, it's very different. They are taking as much space as they possibly can on their defenses. They weren't challenged in taking library control on their half, and they want to make sure that that is not true for their opponent. They are going to have to fight for every inch. It's much more like the trenches in World War One. We don't want to go back to those days. That was very much a we push, you push simulate uh, situation here. Very even, but very costly. And mm. we don't want to see that from the side of Loud Esports. If you're an attacker, you want to get the first pick. You want to take map control without much of an issue here. A beautiful kill from Lasmo on that repel there. And it's already going in favor of Loud Esports here. They've taken away three players on the side of MS here. And all of a sudden, it's looking very good from the side of Loud here. You've got Herbie with that shotgun and Creed's with the MP5 there. All that remains on the side of MS here, but no, they've got the map control they need here, Golu. All that's remaining is then for them to get the free kills here, and it is a flawless round there from the side of Loud Esports. A very different story from what we saw on defense from Loud. Have you ever seen the Herbie films? The Herbie films? Yeah. No, I have not, unfortunately. Have you not heard of Herbie? No, I haven't. Don't start this, Golu. <laughs> Or see, okay, this is like a big part of my childhood. These films, right? Like the the, the, You're car, that old. the, the sentient <laughs> car. What do you the mean? Am I that old? I'm like a year older than you are. Okay, yeah, no, I didn't see Herbie, unfortunately. Oh, man. but carry on. It's a carry on. film. It was like it was like a. I think there are four films. You got Herbie, uh, the Love Bug, uh, the last one's called Fully Loaded, and I can't remember what the other one's called. But it's basically like this car. That is like gonna be scrapped and then it gets saved and it's like a sentient car and then it enters like racing like events mate banging films you should go everyone should go watch them they, they're actually how, how is that related to siege well, it's not but you said herbie and it just triggered my memories oh oh, oh okay so not related to siege but we spent the entire prep phase talking about a sentient car so let's get on to the actual siege here golu i will actually watch that when i have the free time you put films. it in my head now. You put it in I my head. I think they're on Netflix. I think they're on Netflix. This is not a sponsored bit, by the way. Not sponsored, unfortunately. Unless I they want to sponsor. If I got free <laughs> Herbie merch for sponsoring them, that would be. I'm down. Uh, I don't know who owns the rights to that film anymore. Like Paramount Pictures, maybe. But uh, yeah, hit me up. Anyway, we're going back to that top floor again from the side of MS. They just did get flawless here. So what sort of? They're going for a similar setup here. What advice would you give to machine soldiers to help them win this round? By attackers. Um, don't overswing and get caught out by everyone on loud and give them free picks. That would be my... <coughs> if I'm going simply, that's my advice. Honestly, joke, jokes aside, I think they need to play a little bit slower. The whole point of this extended roam is to just whittle away, right? It's to force this battle of attrition. Except they never played into the strength of that setup, right? They never gave themselves the opportunity to fight tooth and nail for every inch. They just died. Oh, that's a C4 already got off the board. Steno gets a kill onto Lasmao. Adrian gets a kill onto the uh, zero there. And it's all popping off in a different manner here. It's MS who's coming out on top. And, and Lao the Esports have just been absolutely caught with their pants down here, Mismo, on very low health here. It's a five versus two situation. And more importantly, MS does have a Thunderbird. So I'm pretty sure Adrian will be coming back up too. 
full health pretty much soon. And the diffuser has been dropped. Is that in the closet or is that just That's outside? outside? It's like on the on, on the, the rocky rocks. on the rocks outside. It looks really weird, but Steno gets a kill onto Baby Shock. It's all up to Mizo with 20 HP on the Yana, so a very powerful operator. But with all players on the side of MS here, on very much full HP here, it's looking like an instrumental, impossible attack here. And that is back-to-back -back flawless rounds. One for each team here, Golu. Yep. <laughs> Nothing to say about that round. <laughs> no, they just, they just did the opposite, right? Like, the first time around, loud find all the kills they just got free kills everywhere second time around you know it's a, it's a respect thing right if you yeah. get the flawless round and you, you completely embarrass your opponent it's only fair to give them the opportunity right and that that's what Lau could take from that they're just playing a, the gentleman's game it's the mm -hmm. it's the correct etiquette but now they yeah. still have to find a couple more rounds machine soldiers one point away from that match point and well starts to get a little bit worrying when you consider the fact that they get to move on to another Attackers site now. What they end up choosing to go for will be interesting to see, but it's the bar gaming, right? And again, this is another one of those things where you have the opportunity to extend yourself as the defender and continue to play this time game, which from what we've seen from Machine Soldiers, that's what I'm expecting. Whether we end up seeing that actually be useful for stalling out time or whether we can see a lot of gunfights very early on, it's probably the former. Because we see the setup used for time wasting, but both these rounds have very much ended up being done within the first minute and a half. So if machine soldiers here want to play the long game, and which I think the reason they did pick bar gaming here, this is my thought process behind this, is they have a very strong hold for their library. They know how to defend it. And that is why they picked bar gaming here. They're gonna do a similar setup to what we saw last round. And Loud Esports, instead of pushing mainly from that master side, we do see more of a split push here. We see the Twitch pushing from... Oh. <laughs> I was about to say something, but Sloth gets the first kill onto Mismo there. And that is the Yana off the board. Mismo going 2-8 and eight here. Not an ideal performance, you could say. You know... It it happens sometimes, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just can't quite get those advantageous gunfights. And I mean, Machine Soldiers, they'll take that opportunity. Super Sloth on very low HP though, because there are no Thunderbirds to boost him up. It means he does have to play from what, 10 HP, give or take for the rest of this round. But that won't be a problem. A minute in and still very little presence for the attack. Super Sloth gonna get another pick now. That's the sledge off the table. The vertical presence no longer gonna be a factor for loud as well again no breaching charges no sledge they're gonna maybe be relying on x cars if they want to if they can get to that position though because well they've lost two sets of frag grenades everything now relying on mythos and as he's the one leading the charge taking this first gunfight he will land the shots onto steno that won't be enough to slob him down creed's potentially the next in line for the gunfight though heavy taking up that position on top white stairs though on top uh, blue stairs and the fact that that deployable shield is still there all the utility is still there to play around it Still problems for Loud. They haven't picked a similar setup to what MS did with that Thatcher to get rid of the ADS that's playing on that blue. So they have to do it the more default way, which is opening up the wall, which you see from the Harbana on yep. that double wall and throwing the smoke, the, throwing the flashes over. But the fact they lost two untraded picks by Sloth early on into the round is going to make this very difficult here. As if you're machine soldiers, you can just wait for them to push you. You've got the Malusis here, which make it very hard. Talking about Sloth, though, he gets his third kill on the round, being at that 10 HP. What is he doing? That's another. That's three untraded kills there coming out from Sloth, and he's just gonna. He's just gonna be in an absolute tear today. The smokes are coming out from the top floor, and if you are allowed esports here, you have to rotate your push. You cannot push towards um, library here. No, you can't. It, it, it's too choked up. These canisters are going off, just continuing to slow you down. Baby Shark trying to get to this fluke window to see if it gives him another avenue for approach. But the problem is there are too many people watching it. There's only two of these attackers remaining. The defenders have plenty of numbers to spread out and choose how they want to take this. Forced through the smoke, will get the injure onto Heavy, but forced back into Piano once again. 15 seconds on the clock. Lasmus tried to go for a rotate. Baby Shark finds the pick onto Creed. It's effectively a two versus two. But as he tries to go in, the refuser will be dropped and time will run out. Oh, Super Sloth finds the last pick actually onto the Twitch as they're coming down the staircase. 
either way, another round in the pockets of machine soldiers and it's starting to look pretty good for them here. You, you favor the chances of taking Chalet, maybe. Definitely. I definitely agree with that statement. What done it for that round was the three untraded kills coming from Sloth. You can't allow machine soldiers to get untraded kills, especially when they're on defense. If you're in a five versus two, four versus two situation we saw there, they did get it down to a two versus two, which they did win their gunfights, Golu, but the fact they had no sort of plan to push onto site, they had no map control to get a solid push off where you could have one person planting and one person watching the diffuser. They just jumped in through that gaming room window and there's too many angles for you to watch there and try and get a plant down with 10 seconds left. That It was a nice win for machine soldiers here and they are on match point going to the kitchen dining site. Now, for this site, I expect a top floor home goal. I think you can agree with me there. Oh yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll see them run upstairs. They have got the deployable shield in the pocket of smoke, which has actually been set up downstairs. They have the other one Crete on that Echo, which I imagine is on piano at the moment, just to continue to to play around that upstairs presence, right? It, it's very similar to how you play the top floor. There we go. Steno setting the reinforcements around that one. And I think we're just seeing a big stylistic difference between Machine Soldiers and Loud, right? When you compare their top floor hold, Loud were playing all around Master. Everything was invested in Master. Everything was invested in Piano. Machine Soldiers, on the other hand, extended all the way out to Library. They forced for everything. The same is true on this top floor, right? You saw Mismo upstairs. He was playing inside a cubby, right back at the, the far end of Master Bedroom, just waiting. And it meant that when Steno was on that buck on attack, he was able to open up all this Master Floor without having to take a gunfight, without having to, for cont to contest for any of it. Again, Machine Soldiers, much more aggressive, much more in your face, aren't gonna allow that to be the case. You have to fight for everything. It's a recovering trend. Mifox though finds the first pick onto Steno. He'll fight for that. Yeah, and a beautiful kill there. And that is Steno, who's the top fragger on the side of Machine Soldiers here. And what we expect from the side of MS here is not... This is the part where you don't want to be too aggressive. You've got the Malusi, you've got the shield on piano. Force Loud to push into you at this point. Ignore what you've wor what's worked for you the past couple of rounds. They've got too much control at this point. You can't retake that push here. Baby Shark gets a kill onto Sloth, and it's already in a three versus five situation at this point, Golu. It's all up to Adrian on this top floor site. He can't give it away too much. If he gives it away, you can have the Sledge. You can have uh, the Ace, who has the soft destruction available, to allow, just to prevent Machine Soldier from holding any significant point oh. here. A beautiful kill there from Kreese onto Mizuno, and Golu, what's going to happen with this round here? Echo's playing too close for my liking, right on that room table, and now he's going to put these picks up, though, shock. Going down, we'll find the kill, finish it off through the sofa there. Double kill for himself in the round. He'll be looking for his third, but no, he gets shot out by the sledge. And this is big because those yokais are no longer going to be able to be effectively used for those sonic blasts. Adrian upstairs trying to contest this upstairs presence, trying to deny these vertical angles being used by the attack. He's going to be taken out for it. Mifox going to kind of punish him hard and heavy. Well, he's left all alone in the one versus three here, Pyro. 50 yeah. seconds the attack to choose how they want to make their move which is plenty of time i mean will you go for the vertical plate will you go for the horizontal plate and overload this smoke bearing in mind there's 40 seconds left on the round and smoke still has two smoke canisters he takes a lot of damage there and i mean loud have just won that early gunfight the diffuser going down in a position where he just doesn't know where it is he has to push here and arrow just gets the kill and a beautiful wrap up there for the side of Loud Esports. If I had to say anything, again, MS there was Adrian in that two versus three situation, Golo. He's on top floor. You know there's two people pushing below and one person's pushing on top. You can't get too aggressive, especially when you have the SMG 11 versus an assault rifle. It's, it's too much at that long range angle and he paid dearly for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He paid very dearly. It's it's hard to figure out, right? Because Loud did a great job of taking that upstairs control and applying that to pressure downstairs. I wonder if Adrian had taken a little bit of a more aggressive stance onto Mifox earlier on into the round. Maybe 
just maybe he could have found the opening there and started to play this vertical presence against the attack. Because if you can retake Master Office as the defender, it's near impossible to plant inside of dining. You're forced to instead try and push deep into kitchen to remove any sort of the site presence, which, again, you're then being forced into close angles against a smoke who has gas canisters to cover you off. As the shotgun has the SMG-11, his arsenal is built around excelling in these close-range engagements. Yeah. So they did a good job of making sure that, that retake couldn't happen. Definitely, and, and just getting that kill on top floor definitely killed the round there for MS. But also those two Five early picks remaining. from Creed's. Definitely a massive play into that round. But onto this round, more importantly, Gola, we do see a master bedroom hold here, a master office push. What we haven't seen in this game yet is a solarium push. We've always seen them push on the library. This could be a free spawn peak here from Sloth, but he is B. He did that a bit too late there, Golu. He may be stuck in Mudroom here. If Loud Esports can isolate the Sloth here, that could be an easy free pick there and a good start to the round for Loud. The Claymore being popped on this wall so that no one can impact Garage and run out on them. It's an interesting way. I mean, now that you have that extra Claymore, you have a little bit more flexibility in where you can place them. You don't have to be as sort of careful. You can you have a bit of guesswork on a potential run out rather than going for what the more guaranteed or more reliable ones are. Adrian making these holes downstairs that if anyone goes below to try and get some vertical grenades off, you can get an angle standing on top of the table. I really like this angle that he's drawing into kitchen. Maybe he'll be paid off for it. There is someone lurking around by trophy not too far away. Yeah, and if 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 loud don't see these long angles, they can get caught off really easy. But I think, as I said before, they are going for that slow push, but Sloth could get a flank hit. The more importantly, how did he get out of Mudroom? They've just completely forgot about Sloth here, and they've got no sort of drone work. Oh, and the no. first kill there coming on to Mythox on the Finker. And more importantly, that's the first kill going into Wars Machine Soldiers here. And yeah, I was going to say you could do a lot with that Sloth on that flank. But they do get kills out. Quick kills get traded out here. It's a three versus three situation as Adrian gets a kill onto Baby Shark. And the Twitch gets a refag before he died there. It's now all up to the players here playing around the Solarian push. They are all clumped together. And Smoke here, Heavy, has such a power position here. Mm. Go. If he just if he just waits for the sound, he can get a grenade. Oh! oh! He landed! No, it takes a hefty chunk of damage! The grenade actually kills himself! He swings onto the sledge with the shotgun! Can't quite land the shots onto the ace though! Lazmu able to salvage something from that play, but now leaves himself in a 1 versus 2, an unenviable position, especially when you're looking down the guns of the two top fraggers for Machine Soldiers. Adrian and Steno won 11 apiece within these 10 rounds. Can they make it 11 for 11 here? It's what they want to do. This is match point on the line. Lazmu fighting to keep Chalet alive. The Chalet dreams. He swings on one, lands the top of the Steno. Why are you going for the one versus one? Adrian now and Lazmu. Who will come out on top? The health advantage very much in favor of the mute. Playing around this bunker, playing behind the bed, dipping and weaving behind the bomb chassis, dipping and weaving behind the nitro cell flies out. Can't break shot out. Adrian though swings. In exchange, the Nitro Cell distracting the ace because you have to deal with it. What a play. And somehow, just by the skin of their teeth, they take Chalet home in what could have been a very dangerous clutch position. I was getting so worried there. I mean, why are you giving one versus one situations with the ace there? <laughs> I was getting so worried. I was like, no, please do not throw this, MS. You have the chance to take a 1-0 league, which they do in the end. But it was all down to Adrian with the, using the Nitro as a bait and getting the SMG kill there. That could have been a very different story there. Well, it could have been, but ultimately it wasn't. Machine Soldiers able to take home the map and it was their map pick. So that is something to take from this, right? Is that you're supposed to win that map. But now you're looking at the situation where they go onto Villa. And Villa plays a little bit differently to Chalet. It's a little bit more defender inherently sided. But good attacking play, if you know what you're doing, has a similar sort of vibe to Chalet at times where you can really start to pinch defenders into uncomfortable positions. But we will be jumping to a very short break before we reach Villa. So make sure you come back for that. It'll only be about five minutes long. 
just to give everyone a chance to get a breather and recover from what was a little bit of a hectic ending there at the end. But ultimately, we'll be back, so don't go anywhere unless you're grabbing a quick snack. Be back though. soldiers here they leave two people up top they push down below i mean they're coming to west main now and you've got agent here with a shotgun on west main and Kroger just gets that kill he gets a double kill oh my god Kroger's popping off with that triple kill Could be if oxidy you would know then boy oh boy would he be worried well it's actually going to be mr easter to take out spooky my lord <laughs> wait you dallas oh. wait you boy oh boy Boy, I have a cubal dream bad about oh this one God. for you, Suka. <laughs> I am absolutely amazed. Like, yo, great congrats to Mr. Easter's and stuff, but yes. Has to get very aggressive. Christmas oh. did spot out the player out there, and Oxy D is able to take down Joe. This could be the perfect time for this one. He's just prepped it just so that. When the player's melee is expecting something, they get something completely different. When they just come through, yeah, we'll be able to escape. And if you look up there, here's Coinfield taking out the depth chat. And Dallas wow. will fall finally on from Oxy D, as he already has his third kill up on this round. It's all down to Mr. Easter for two for gatekeepers. Yeah. Who are they? Yeah, going to be ideal, although it did, did force back the attack just for a little bit longer. A lovely shot by Doki, though. That's exactly what he wants. He's going to have to fall back with the rotation. Going to leave it. Yeah, going to leave it open. He's not going to run around the cover to try and hide his fallback. So he doesn't get caught off by the attack now. Got to be careful with these long angles. We saw what Visu were able to do with it. Quick trade going through. Doki able to re pick that kill up for his team. Oh, and as well as finding another one onto Ethan's. That's a lovely yeah, triple kill for Doki in this round. So it's full white flashed it. But the smoke is just denying any sort of push from the He's still in that area. And Doki just finishes up with a, a 4K from Doki that round. Indicator that someone is doing something cheeky, something funny, but JTT finds the first pick. Gets an injure as well. He'll secure that kill. I believe the fingers are trying to pick themselves up. He didn't really thought that's open. Did he find himself third? No way! He swung hit fire with the SMG 11 to make it four and.
Hello guys and welcome back to the second game of this Major League Week 3 of Talent League. I am Pyro, if you forgot, and this is my good friend and fellow caster, my G, Golu Molu. Oh, I hey. love that wink there, I love that wink. Okay. <laughs> can you wink both eyes? That's the real challenge, because you can go like... But, like, the problem is, if I go with one eye, like, sometimes your other eye like, no, scrunches I, your face too much. What I do like is uh, normally, like, double-sided, so it's, it's weird. Nice. I don't know what... Go, the other one is the raised eyebrow. Yeah. I could do the raised eyebrow on one side, but I can't do it on the other. I could do it both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry for distracting you. Uh, yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. And, um, you know, we just had a lovely game on Chalet. 7-4 to Machine Soldiers was their map pick, though. So that's something, you know, to, to take note of. But... Map number two, just around the corner, just about to jump into it. Should be pretty good fun. As, uh, well, never mind. We, we actually are jumping into it. Cut you off right in the middle there. Beautiful game now. Oh, my God. What is that? What, what is what? In my ear. We're going on to Villa, though. I love Villa as a map. It's probably better than Chalet, in my opinion. But I'm, go I'm going to guess these map bands. You ready for this? <laughs> the, the operator bands, you mean? Yeah. I'm ready Why for it. Say map uh, uh, hit me up. Quick, 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 quick. Okay. No, you you got to say all four though. I, I am Thatcher, Flores. You you were saying quick, quick, quick. Thatcher, Flores, Mirror, and Valkyrie. Oh, so the same as last time. If Machine Soldiers remembered to ban. Yeah. Yeah. Cable oh yeah, Cable was last time. time. Yeah. Come on. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, you know what? I'm sorry that I couldn't be as, as big-brained as you. There's the Flores, though. Loud, clearly not wanting to deal with that. So you're looking looking to be two for two so far. Can you carry it forward? What last two? Mira out from game. Loud? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, Mira's very strong on a lot of these sites, especially both of these top floor sites. You're looking at Aviator. You control so much space into study. You control so much space from Gibar and like games into aviator as well you don't want to deal with that and valkyrie again a lot of soft floor makes sense i think this is a very uh well educated ban phase from you let's see if you're correct though uh, will i be correct I... hey let's go for once in my life i actually did it <laughs> and you know what pyro we're all proud of you i have a pat on the back i'm gonna pat myself on the back for that you do that in the cams i'm gonna do it with... you guys can't see but you can hear it I think it's interesting that Machine Soldiers choose to ban Thatcher after they had such good usage of the EMP to remove these ADSs, to disable the Magnus, to shut off the laser gates, to give them these opportunities to catch out key pieces of utility, which, you know, we didn't quite see Loud have the same proficiency in using and clearing as, as, the, as Machine Soldiers showed. So to get rid of it, deny themselves their own tool is interesting. And it, it does lead me to believe that they maybe wanted to ban it, forgot I, I i think that might be the uh correct little option there for you Golu. but going into spot. this the machine soldiers are on the defensive side and there's no real surprise here about the site of aviator and games which i'm pretty sure is a standard site for most pro league and t4 teams and if i look cast myself a little bit back towards this overview here on cgg 58 percent defensive win rate on this site alone, Golu. So a pretty much no-brainer here. Yeah, it's a popular site for a reason. And it's just because you can command so much space. You're seeing machine soldiers expand like they were on Ch on Chalet, right? They're going for this sort of extended hold once again, reinforcing some of these walls over by uh, statue, and then giving themselves these options to contest with these long angles that you're seeing Sloth make up now, watching towards that vault and closet because. Attacking teams want to take from master bedroom. They want to take as much space as possible, give themselves that landing, and more importantly, 90 control, so that eventually when they go for this plant, they can deny rotations to defenders. I use this a lot of times in round. You get three picks if you push into that uh, closet area there. It's just such an OP position. And I want to see how MS are going to play more towards this backside we do see one playing on concrete there and i assume there is another person playing towards that that astro side there was there one actually on the astro stairs or no uh, it was actually yeah, yeah there Malusi. was actually one towards that astro stairs with the agent there on the malusi doing a bit of damage there towards uh, the side of allowed esports mute is going to play below and will he get a nitro 
I don't think there's any intel ops here from the side of machine soldiers, so it might be a pretty random guess nitro, you could say. Yeah, not quick landing with any target there. Mifox still pushing in very aggressively, already up to landing. There's Steno right around the corner, but it will be Steno Ooh. to fall. The lands the headshot in just the nick of time to save himself there. The frag grenade can dissuade anyone from pushing up red as well. It will force the rotation back to main stairs. Removing that shield frees them up a yeah, little bit. You're no longer so worried about that power position, but you've got to be careful oh, yeah. off this flank. Malusi sneaking around, looking to see if they can pull something off. Blasmo is aware though and is waiting patiently. Yeah, this flank could be an absolute massive thing for the side of machine soldiers here. But the shots are just going to dissuade Adrian there from pushing around. And he will be going towards that main stairs area here. Yeah, not to get any sort of kill towards. And he actually does. He gets an impact kill from below there. And that does level up the scoreboard here. And that is the Finker off the board. Who, as you remember, got the opening kill for the side of Loud here. They are going to open up into vault area here. But they have to deal with the shield towards main stairs. Oh, yeah, trying to, trying to get this opened up. Sloth will find the pick onto Baby Shark. That does not help. The Gone 6 being used to remove the global shield. That was in their way as Lasmu just stuns himself a little bit. Arabo poking in from this zombie doorway will get the refrag there onto the alibi. Adrian still inside of study though, which is a position you really don't want to have anyone playing in this doorway that he's by. It's such a commanding position. A lovely grenade though will deal with that problem. Creed's could be be the third one to walk into study. It's becoming a bit of a death zone for any defenders here as he walks in looking to see if he can find anyone. Vault been open on up. They're rotating in. A lovely shot from Creed's to find the first. Milzmo will find Creed's though and Heavy will fall to Lasmu very swiftly. So despite what looked like potentially the start of a comeback there with Creed's mounting up that study position, alas it was not to be. Could have very much paid off there if the mute didn't die on that study position as you just said. They could have played around there and Smoke still had one more canister left off. If he used that last canister to take away 10 seconds, there would have been 7 6 seconds left on the round. And if you play strategically with the smoke and the mute, I think MS could have won that round. That round could have gone anyway, in my opinion, there. But a beautiful win. And allowed esports do get the victory here. Now, the next site for which MS will go to, I'm assuming it's going to be the same site. Yes, it will be ABG and Games Room again. Go, Luke. What changes will there be made from the side of machine soldiers here? Ooh, well, that is a good question. I think the big thing for me was that they did an all right job at stalling up time on this room, right? You had Adrian playing a little bit of footsie around the astronomy staircase, just causing some problems, causing some doubts for the attack. It was just losing two players on that study doorway, right? Normally, what you want to try and force out from the attack is they'll rotate someone onto study balcony maybe onto the study windows just to try and deny this rotation through study because of how important it is to deny you can swing that doorway straight onto behind the vault door the angle of that doorway does not protect you from study so you want to get on that doorway swing onto that default plant position if they choose to instead go for a plant or model table, you're going to catch that as well. The run out not quite landing with its target. You're going to go for round two, though. Now, I think he has a better idea of where they're playing, just narrowly avoiding the shots from the repelled players of Loud as they were coming up to that top floor. But Steno, on that lesion now, will start to run away, dropping goos behind him as he goes, just to slow down the approach of Loud, force them to pull out these goo mines from their foot so that they don't take that continuous damage. It's also more of a, I think, a sound call there for Asian, who's playing towards that statuary trophy side. Yeah. If he knows they're coming from bathroom, he can rotate and hold towards that trophy door. He does get dragged out here and takes a bit of damage from that master bedroom side. He's going to rotate below here, join up with his fellow teammates who have pushed up red, actually. So if you're allowed here, you've taken map control into statuary and trophy relatively quickly here. Now on their mind, they're going to set up flank camps towards that Astro side, aren't they? To prevent any sort of late game roam that we saw lurking around last round. Yeah, it's a lovely drone being set up there from the Finko on that plant pot on Red Stairs, just to give them that commanding position where they can see everything in that line of sight. And you can see all the way down to 90 if anyone tries to swing, but Creed's will be the first to get the pick this round. The Nitro Cell coming off big. A couple frag grenades close to finding their targets. Lupusloth 
specifically escaping with very little HP before, but that's the first fatality. Adrian now back inside of sight has been boosted up by the Thunderbird. That will make it a little bit harder for the attack to find these kills. Steno taking some damage now. He's also back inside of sight. All the defenders trying to anchor up Creed's in that study position. No one yet taking that flanking opportunity to try and apply pressure from the balcony, from the windows, which I talked about, just to see if they can deny these picks. The first find will for the attack will come through. Though Adrian stuck in a little bit of a hard corner there, Pyro, and yep. that's the opening they want. Yeah, it's the four versus four situation. A minute left. We saw from the attacker's side they did definitely after that first pick came off, slow down, push back. They've got control of ninety and that zombie door, which is very important. And as you said at the beginning of the round, for them to do, they have gone to that study single window there. So they are going to cut off any sort of flanks that MS can do towards that study side. So definitely a very strong position here for Loud. They've opened up into Vault here, and they are going to look to go for their plant here, go for their push into. Steno gets a kill onto the Yana there. So all the advantage here for the side of MS. A beautiful, kill, a beautiful double kill there. It's a four versus one situation and he's already been down by Steno. Oh, I have to say, I heard it from you there. A beautiful kill onto that study balcony there. They had the correct yeah. positioning, but they just didn't win their gunfights and Machine Soldiers come out with the victory there. Well, I think the big thing is that they just lost all their potency when they're trying to push in through zombie door. They're trying to go for this plant, but every time they walk up to the doorway, they're getting shot out. The purpose of the sledge on that balcony isn't to walk in and get all the kills. It's to play on the window, just deny the swing, right? You have that opening on the wall from study into aviator. If you just sledge open that window, people can no longer watch in through that hole. They can no longer watch towards zombie door. They can no longer stand on the study doorway into Aviator Attackers because to it's just too exposed. That's how you want to play it, it's just deny that space. But when he tries to walk in, he tries to take an aggressive gunfight against Steno, he suddenly loses all of that positional advantage and things just start to fall apart. Yeah, I definitely agree with your analysis onto that round. And that was uh, definitely a lot better there from MS. And they do decide to go to their trophy statue site this round. So will we see a push and I, I think we are actually going to see the left side of that triple wall being opened and the head high holes being opened towards into the closed area of yes. the so definitely a lot harder for them to push into that master bedroom closet and get control of the master but I remember you saying at the start of this uh, map here going, for a villa it's very much you push the opposite side of the site so this time they will push into aviator and bar area take mm. control of 90 and then push into the uh the wolf area but no they're actually not they're actually going to go for a pantry push here so i think they're looking to go either towards astro or to prevent the two players from the side of machine shots playing below mismo gets a kill onto steno so that's already an influential player out from machine soldiers there and a good starting kill from the side of loud esports you also lose those regenerative two mines, right, which can be dropped down to slow the approach. Another kill coming in favor very quickly. In fact, that's two. Is Mismo able to find another pick onto Adrian in tandem with the pick Finker found downstairs onto the Frost? So things all of a sudden starting to look quite bleak for the side of Machine Soldiers. They've already lost three players with just a minute, not even actually a minute, gone from play. Creed's now looking to just get a little bit aggressive now. You want to try and draw some picks back in your advantage? Oh, not quite enough damage to finish off the kill onto the Nomad. Means it's still up. And with that, it's Finker downstairs below. Those adrenal surges will be popped to pick their teammates' health back up closer to full. Now swinging in, the Nomad's going to go down. Heavy finds the first. Is this the comeback opportunity? No, he'll be injured on the breach. No opportunity for Creed to pick him up here. Yeah, he's definitely not going to be able to pick up here, and he's just going to get absolutely surrounded from all sides from the side of Loud Esports here. They actually do have control, and Squeeze is pushed back off the side. Will he go for the res? No, Mathox gets the kill onto Heavy, so now it is a one versus four situation. He does hear the barbed wire being broken on red stairs, and he will get the kill onto Mismo here. Plant's going down, but there's too many angles for Creeds to watch here. He does know where Plant's being taken down here, but Mathox just gets the kill onto Creeds there, and I believe that was a 3k on the round for him. A 4k if you um, accept the down kill that he got, the finish, onto the player who was down.
Yeah, it was another example of a good post-plant positioning from the side of yeah. Loud, right? You have one playing very close on that deer, contesting that trophy doorway very aggressively, but it also gives you the option if that Jaegus pushes into Statue, where you have the shot across the drop into the other site. Finker playing back instead of Astro, not giving any space, watching the long angle, cover support, and more importantly, that refrag potential with the Habana. Last in Master Bedroom. He's setting up this network, which just Dagger in the three versus one is bombs. near impossible to take back from. Yeah, definitely. And what was even more influential that round was the three on traded kills mm. pushing in from below. If you can't get trade offs, you're going to put yourself into a very bad situation, which we saw unfold out into that round. And machine soldiers have put, have actually chosen to go back to their trophy and statue site here not opting to go towards the bomb floor site here into the uh kitchen dining room area which we do see a lot of teams play and it has a very high win rate for this season of pro league Goli. so maybe they're just not comfortable pushing below it's always an interesting one i mean if, if, we, look, if we look at the pattern of play so far right yeah. loud win and attack onto one site a lot into aviator games. Yeah. Machine soldiers choose to run it back. They get the win. Get the win. They lose onto trophy. They choose to yep. run it back. Can they win it this time around? Obviously, it's not the ideal pattern. You'd rather be winning these rounds and then getting to move elsewhere to come back to it later, before it's too late and you don't get this opportunity to defend it twice. We'll get two wins on it. Kreese taking a lot of damage from an early frag grenade. The carelessness of the thinker, the drones not being used properly, but he's just swung out into the open for literally no reason. Steno getting a little bit overzealous there, looking for that second pick. He leaves his back completely vulnerable, and Kreese is also on very low HP. Yeah, definitely a bit too aggressive there from Steno. The missed drone was very unfortunate from the side of Loud there. Mathouts just trusted his team. A bit too much there and an unfortunate, but they do manage to trade it out and they did get the early damage onto Kreez. I assume it was from a grenade throw. Yes, it was from a grenade throw. So going into this round, two minutes down, one player from each side are off the board. But the only difference here is Loud Esports have Attackers all the of the map control they need, Golu. And more importantly, they bought your favorite operator. They have bought Monty, amazing for Intel gain, and amazing to sit behind and plant. The yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they choose to use it here, though, because oh, turning around a little bit, little bit aggressively, you got that smoke on the board with Heavy, right? And he, he will be able to ignite a lot of space with these gas canisters. Monty just turning around to grab that cake so that they can walk in for their plant when they want to. They've got to get rid of the shield. They've got to try and burn it out. So they're using the stuns for now and should be using the gun six to get rid of that and get it off the table. But be careful. They're hiding all the way around inside a trophy, trying to get this long angle across the sites. The first of these toxic babes has been spent by the smoke just to slow down the push from this Monty going in, probing at this trophy doorway. Nomad is looking to see if they can find the first pick, but it's not going to be enough. Frost having to fall back, having to use the global shield, uh, the, the bomb chassis for some cover, dropping down in fact to try and hit a flank up red. This is going to draw away the attention of the attackers, but the first pick will go Adrian. He's going to drop. The smoke canister is now being used to block off this trophy doorway as well. Careful of the flank from Frost. They are aware that something might be going on. The pick up of Creed is able to come through heavy, being forced to stall out as much time as he can by himself. And he's done a good job of getting into position. He'll finally fall though, getting a refrag. As he goes, they trade it out. Super Sloth all by himself now as Lasmu finds the pick onto Creed. And he has to try and fight against a Monty and one other. And it won't be enough. The information constantly being relayed by that Monty on their whereabouts is just a little bit too much to deal with. The shots from the Habana will ring true. You see, I, I like how Monty was used there to get into position. After you cleared out that smoke shield that was on concrete, you allowed the Monty to push in, used it for intel, allowed Loud to identify where the defenders were playing, and then use that push, use that intel to push them effectively. We saw the late game flank did not work out quite well. He was actually wasn't going for a flank. I think he went up towards Astro Stairs to get the um, the res back onto the downed player. But that was beautiful from Monty there. I think you can agree with that. Attackers I think you can agree with me, go. Mm. Yeah, I really like the way that baby shark was, was rocking, rocking the shield. <laughs> Good shield gameplay is always a treat to watch. I haven't seen any Clash yet, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, I, I think Clash is actually... 
there's still time. I think Clash is actually really strong on Villa. I think the fact that there's a lot of like single long corridors and avenues where you're forced to go down as an attacker really lends into the strength of having that shield. And it's the same for Monty, right? You you have these long corridors where you're walking up, you're fighting in these very tight doorways where you just rock that shield up in front and you can relay so much information very safely on corners that are usually a little bit more risky to check, such as we saw in the last round. We just walked into statue and he could just watch, look straight at the defenders and get as much as he wants to know. Now though, we're seeing this extension once again for machine soldiers all the way across the top floor. They have to be very careful though, because well, look, we saw what happened last in the, in the first round, right? They just all fell within an instant. All, all four, uh, three, sorry, on the roam died very quickly. And that's been a recurring trend for Messine soldiers on this map. And we saw it happen once on Chalet, where a lot of them died very early on on their roam. And it looked like a, a, a blip, right? Where they just didn't know what was quite going on. But Steno falls very early again in this round. It's looking more and more to be a recurring problem. Maybe they're not quite aware of this map's locations. Maybe they're not quite sure what Loud are doing around them. But it's nothing particularly advanced or uncommon so i'm not quite sure why it's catching them off so well and did you see that player on main stairs could be a massive problem here if they're not too careful i mean if sloth peeked out a little bit more there he yeah. could have probably killed onto mathox the grenade from this teammate almost killed him as well but there is a very heavy gate of roam presence from this team but i think as you said just earlier and going from what we saw last map definitely you either it's either you get a lot of kills on the flank or all your flankers die immediately all your roamers die instantly mm. it's never one it's never in between it's always the two extremes here adrian is gonna move his that's a bit risky to be fair if they had 90 patrol and they didn't know about it and it is definitely possible with one minute 30 left into the round that could have been a free pick on to adrian there but kill coming out from crease that's the first kill for the side of machine soldiers here and evening up the man count that shield is going to be um actually destroyed here from this grenade using the gone six to burn a better gone six placement than i use golu yeah no bar no barricades being blown up here today and that's what you love to see lasmu aware of a potential flanking opportunity it was adrian that was going for it before but this time he's positioned at the top of main stairs the drone hole actually being used very effectively by heavy to poke some damage onto that yana adrian still chilling downstairs it's actually gonna be red that he tries to flank around on this could be quite a big one this all the attackers lining up on that zombie door looking to see if that can be an opportune angle for their approach the run out from the lucy downstairs gonna actually get the down onto baby shark on the balcony super Sloth finding mismo as well that's a big play for them baby shark being picked up but heavy finding another onto the adrian maybe uh, onto Mythbox, getting that pickup just in the nick of time here, Pyro. 20 seconds left as they're trying to walk on in. The knock finds the pick onto Adrian. That's a big cover. You have the support now for Lasmo if he wants to try and get this diffuser down against the bomb chassis, but the angle from Bolt is something you'll have to contend with. He is. He finds the frag. The Nitro Cell blows up, but it's not enough. Lasmo still looking down, getting that plant down. Supersoft will find him out. They'll be shooting through the sofa, and it won't be enough. Machine Soldiers will hang onto the round and pick up their second defensive win. About time, though, right? Yeah, it's about time, and definitely that round was based off of um, timing there. I think if Loud Esports definitely had a bit more time, they could deal with the player playing towards that vault area. And Smoke had quite a few Smoke canisters left, so amazing work from the Smoke there. But that bottom floor run out, he was definitely exposed before he actually got the kill there, so Hibana could have got the, uh, the kill there. So it could have gone any way there, but... Three versus it's three two right now towards loud. And if you are loud esports here, you're wanting to go four two up. If you go four two up, especially on a map which is it's more towards the even ended area. It is quite a, a defensive map, I would say, but it's not too far. But we actually do see a change up here from the side of MS. They are choosing to go to that kitchen dining site, Golu, which has a very high win rate in terms of t1 and t2 competition maybe that can transfer over here for machine soldiers 
Hmm. And it, I mean, it's interesting what they're going for here, right? They're choosing to triple reinforce the wall in statue, playing a little yeah. bit further back, having less of these long lines of sight open to try and contest onto these windows in master bedroom, instead favoring the choke points that you get instead, right? You have the option now to force the defenders through bathroom or through... Uh, the, the master doorway. You have the Cade Claw set up below, which will hit all three of these walls. And usually, right, if you're playing in Trophy Statue and you throw a Cade Claw down steps, what's going to happen is that the attackers are going to go up below, they're going to shoot out that Cade Claw off the ceiling, and it's going to be game over. Game over for Super Sloth, though. He's going to be the first to fall, trying to get aggressive inside of Art. The Refract trying to come through will get a pick, but will be injured for it. Mifox will make it a double kill for himself in the round. He took the credit for go over to the Sledge who was felled earlier on. Two very quick picks for Loud once again, though, here, Pyro. Yep. I don't know. I don't know it's about Steno this. being picked off in the first one minute of round for the third time in a row. He does get a kill for his troubles, but if you're defensive here, you do want a man advantage, especially when the site you're playing on has a lot of vertical action that can be exploited from Loud Esports. You still have Adrian in living room here, but if you're... If you're loud esports, you want to not focus on the horizontal push as much and focus on the top floor. I guess the sort of reprieve there is that you did catch the sledge up. So you have gotten them as primary tool for vertical, but they're going completely horizontal, overloading into living room. And well, Creed's forced to back up. The LMG is not repenting. It will find a triple kill for Mifox in the round. Looking for his quadra, not letting go of M1 as he swings around the corner. Has to take the strike against the shotgun. But Baby Shark from behind walks his way into sight. Will pick up that frag. And well, Loud Esports looking a lot more dominant here on Villa. Taking Machine Soldiers for an absolute whirl of a time. Um, if I had one criticism of that round, I think you can agree with me there. Machine, machine soldiers are way too aggressive as the defense there. Losing two players within a minute and then still playing for that living room site, which I don't think living room you, you desperately need as an attacker for that site. They're way too aggressive on the defense there, and that lost them that round. It is intriguing that they're going for so many of these early opening picks, trying to spawn peek, trying to just hide in cheeky corners, and they're getting caught out every time. I feel like it's yeah, the sort of thing where you, you can try it a couple times, but then you really need to fall off of it and go back to playing the fundamentals of the map, which we never quite saw from Machine Soldiers. A lot of their rounds were focused on just this hyper-aggressiveness and just going straight for the throat on loud, and a lot of times... You know, they, they were ready. They've been practicing their karate for the little one-two block counter-attack. And, well, that's why they're four rounds up. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Karate, one-two counter block. Okay, you want to see the action? Oh, if only you could see. But, loud esports here. On what would be reckoned as a very um, defensive-sided map. Well, quite defensive-sided map. This is definitely an advantage here for the side of Loud Esports, going to ABG and Bar first. We do see the majority of the attacking side of Machine Soldiers here, pushing towards the Master Bedroom and Trophy side. We have got Mizumo here playing in Statuary, and I don't th he, he, I think he's joined by one defender as well here, Golo. So a 2-3 split on the defensive side. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a, a nice way to play it. You know, you've got one player inside a statue, one inside of Astro, and if you get contested, if you start getting pressured out, you can always fall back into Trophy and hold this long angle, giving cover to Mismo. You've got the drop down as well. There's plenty of routes to fall back from. Just waiting to see what the first move for the attack will be. It will be Adrian jumping in through that wolf window, punished very quickly for his aggression. Steno finds the pick onto Mismo. That's the Jaeger going down as Baby Shark shuts down Steno on the refrag, who pushed a little bit too deep in and wasn't careful enough from the angle drawn from landing. Well, minute gone. Two members of Machine Soldiers off the board. As they're starting to make their way now to take control of 90, to take control of landing and start to apply pressure onto the site here, Pyro. And it's what is needed here. They've taken so much map control quite easily here. Two players on the side of Machine Soldiers are off the board for the one of Loud Esports. So definitely an advantage here for the defensive side. But as you can see through the uh, wall here, they do have 90, 90 control here for Machine Soldiers. So they'll definitely be pushing 
and looking to open into vault but you have to be careful of your flanks both of the players from the side of machine soldiers are watching flank drones here so they probably do know where this mozzie is and yes they do and they get the kill onto that flanking mozzie here so it's now a three versus three situation girlie they're trying to get rid of this aviator g shield here you know, they've burnt out the Sharia gate. It will be able to be reactivated in about 20 seconds. They need to make sure they burn out these ADSs before then. That's going to be the signal for Baby Shark just to pull back as the frag grenades fly through. Good job avoiding too much of the damage. The three versus three situation means you don't want to give yourself any free kills. Creeds will land the shots down onto the Aruni, who got a little bit over aggressive on 90, a top main. Now, just trying to see if they can find a way into sight. Baby Shark reactivating that Surreal Gate will cause a couple problems. It will be burned very quickly, though, here. 30 seconds for them to make a move in the two versus three. The smoke grenades coming out. This is the opportunity for them to try and plant. Yeah, they, they do need to go for a plant here. And they're going through Zombie Door here. They have got Controller Study. And they're just going to be watching this plant here. But can they actually get the kill? They do manage oh. to get on the vault. And he's just going to push away. He actually can no. come off from Nasmo here. He's going to put the Nitro out to get the final kill. And he does. Oh. What a triple kill from Lasmo there. As Lau gets the victory in what should have been a Machine Soldiers round there. Golu, you don't sound happy. I, I don't get it. Right? That is a free round for Machine Soldiers there. They get the pick. It's a three versus two. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you know, one is playing inside a vault. Why are you trying to? Why are you trying to walk, like put the diffuser down next to the bomb chassis? You're literally putting yourself in the worst well. position oh. to be shot from vault. I actually what think that's mean? a worse position than behind couches. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not worse than behind couches, right? Because, like, couches, you could be shot from anywhere, whereas at least on the bomb chassis, you're protected if they're inside of Aviator. But when they're in Trophy, or when, they, when they're in Vault, sorry, you're walking out into their line of sight. You have chosen to walk past Vault, past the Vault door, right? Past yep. Vault table, which you could also go for, because when you're planting, your head's lower down, you're hidden, you're obscured, you're going to be able to get that plant down. You've then walked into the open effectively and the position where you can push out a vault and be not exposed because there's the door right there so you can't have anyone covering you the only cover you can have is from that study single door five seconds to i'm not a fan i i think if you go for the plant behind vault door even if you're afraid of the swing coming in from study you can refrag right if they swing study and shoot at your diffuser cat like the, the planter behind the door, you should be able to trade out that pick. And then you're playing a two versus one. And again, you should be able to try and play a sort of numbers advantage angle there. Creed's could even hit them in the side, but Super Sloth taking a lot of early damage. Super Baby Shark trying to shoot from the doorway on top of the master bedroom, trying to shoot out the windows just to get some kills. The first Adrenal Surge will have to be used up. They are back. Well, loud for the first time are now playing inside of Trophy and Statue. And Again, we've seen this trend though, Pyro. They're not extending across too much of the map. They're playing much more tight to, tight to sight, even if they have a couple roamers doing their own thing. It's a similar sort to what we saw last game, wasn't it? A very mm. passive aggressive, you could say. Bomb located yeah. by uh, Yeah, definitely passive aggressive for sight here. It, it does allow Steno. I think Steno is actually going to get a free kill here. He times that perfectly. No! Mizzo gets away with absolute robbery there. That should have been a free kill from the side of Steno there. Just mistimes his grenade slightly. Oh, I actually feel bad about that grenade there. That should have been a kill, Golu. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's why these margins for error are so small, you know? If that doesn't bounce down a little bit more, but Adrian finds the first pick onto Baby Shark, who you know, was causing some problems for them earlier in the round. Mythox trying to get another pick as well. Mismo will be injured upstairs, and while he should be in a position to be able to be picked up, no one pressuring him too immediately, a lot of the angles to get to him are being cut off. So it's causing some problems. I'm not sure what Lazarus is to do running for the hatch there, Pyro. But he's going to get punished for it. Why is he running in that position? It's a two versus five situation in the favor of Machine Souls here. Oh, yeah, um, that's an easy kill there from Hebby. On to Mathox and it's a five versus one situation. This could be very easy, a flawless round. Never mind, what a kill with that SMG 11. 
Hebby finally gets the kill onto Mizumo, and yeah, that's just going to be Steno ending up the round and a victory for Machine Soldiers in the second half of this major second game. That was very nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because that's that's not the kind of take that I'm a big fan of. Right? I, I'm not always a fan of taking just directly into Master. I think when we saw Loud playing for that study, uh, through, through the study side, taking that landing control, I think it's a little bit more reliable. But clearly Machine Soldiers knew exactly what they were looking for, right? They found the picks pushing in through be uh, Bathroom. They were able to hold these angles, denying the landing rotates to recover that Jaeger once he fell as well, burning yeah, out the utility on that shield very effectively. Well. So whilst it's not my personal favorite, they still knew exactly what they were doing and they did a good job of giving themselves the angles that they needed to and more importantly removing important pieces of utility along the way which gave them openings that they needed to to find these frags and it's something that we need to see a little bit more from machine soldiers right it's not giving up these early picks and then using the utility that they have across their across the board just to slowly whittle away and gain these advantages i definitely think machine soldiers is the more aggressive side yeah, out of um, these yeah, two for yeah. sure so it's either they place their strengths of being aggressive. The only problem with that is it's a very high risk, high reward situation. So, yes, you are 5-3 down at this point, but do you stay aggressive or do you go for more of a passive, untested strategy, you could say? Baby Shark going for a very aggressive play, quite contrary to what we say, and nearly gets killed from a free fire through the window of Pantry there. So... I don't like this aggressive play that Loud are coming out with now. That's twice in a row that Baby Shark has gone for a spawn peak. This time it yielded nothing. The first round that he did do it, which was last round, he did do a lot of damage, but there is the Thinker who is aging at this point. Oh, Mapbox is looking around downstairs, looking to see who might expose themselves to him. He's just trying to find the shots in. Oh, nice well-hidden drone from Adrian. Will give the information. It will be shot down, though, knowing that there's someone around. A couple spreads through the wall towards the red stairs. Not quite going to land with their target, but that's a couple shots that have been very close to landing. Some wall bangs. The Gemini gets shot out by Baby Shark, who's back inside of sight now. I'm not going to lie. Part of me thought that was just the Diana just running through for no reason. It makes a lot more sense that it was a Gemini. Steno now. I say, if that was actually the uh, <laughs> Yana, I would be a very bit, annoyed, a very bit worried there. Yeah. Oh, Attackers the first pick though, bomb. that's Baby Shark going down. Nice kill there, that is the um, Aruni of Baby Shark, the very aggressive player here. And Mathox, if he actually doesn't be careful of his back hit, could... Oh, he does see Ooh. the person off that attack. Uh -oh. But the attack of Yoni, he's gonna go for the free kill here. A beautiful head share onto Steno. Steno's just, he hasn't got any headphones on, Goli. <laughs> A beautiful Ooh. kill there. It's also unfortunate that his teammate was on drone yeah, outside the, the window that the, that the mozzie yeah. walked up through. But that is the opportunity that Loud were looking for to deny the vertical presence. Heavy though, another wonderful Shut shot out. deep into sight. Yeah, Super Sloth making it two as Mismo goes down as well. Well, Lazmu, he's looking around to see what he can pull back inside of sight. The Nitro Cell from below will find Creed's. Lazmu getting aggressive on this bathroom doorway. He has to be a careful of presence on both sides of him as he's ducking and weaving in and out the doorway. Mephox finds a triple kill in the round though and now will continue to mount this assault through bathroom flanking all the way around behind and Lazmu will find a quick double kill dipping and weaving inside the doorway from Split catching both the attackers off guard. That was a good retake there from Loud. You could, you could class that as a retake. I don't think the actual mozzie was on Sorry, he was he was in Astro, and you did have Mathux on below. So I'm going to class that as a retake, Golu. But it was a beautiful round there from Loud Esports, going from a four versus two situation into a four versus nothing. I think if 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 the Mozzie didn't get the kills there, pushing through onto the Planters, I think Mathox would have got that round anyway. The breach was open; they had no one in towards Master Bedroom. They were both in that statuary site there, Golu. So a very nice round there from Loud. And more importantly, if you look at the scoreline, it's six three match point for Loud Esports. Yep, and that's a big, Defenders big deal because they have a couple rounds cushion as well. Machine soldiers need three rounds in a row to push themselves to overtime. And, well, don't sound confident in your voice there, Golu. I think Loud just 
for, for every time that machine soldiers have a strong round, there's one where they just give an edge to loud that's a little bit unnecessary. Right, we're, we're thinking back to the last time they were attacking onto Aviator Games. They probably could have had this round. Now, there's still a chance that the two remaining members of Loud would be able to pull off uh, an upset, right? But yep. well, not an upset, but we'd be able to pull the round through Five because it was still left. a two versus three. That's still a winnable round for the defense, but they were kind of gifted that diffuser, which forced the remaining attackers to have to go on the aggressive when really you'd want to be looking to play around a plant and support your planter. So if they can just tidy up a little bit, then maybe they can pull this off. But it's going to require three pretty clean rounds from a team who, for all their brilliance, do have a tendency to have a couple hiccups in their game. It's definitely the the aggressive play style of Loud that could bite them in the ass. It's Steno's a very aggressive player, Sloth, Creed as well. We see them just pushing in here. And this could be an, an easy flank there for Mathox as he gets the first kill onto Sloth. So that aggressive yeah. play we're talking about is already getting oh, no. He's not even going to see the player pushing. He's going to see the player pushing onto Mini. He might even get the player towards the double window, the double door there. But no, Creed gets a kill onto Mathox. It's a four versus three situation, Golu. That could have very, been, very easily been a five versus two at this point. Yeah, fortunate to hit those shots to shut the mozzie down before too much and get out of control. Oh, be able to bring shot. the man count back to even. Stevens, though, it's going to force the remaining defenders to fall back to site to try and anchor up. We've only just about had a minute of play. We've got to be careful of these vertical grenades. Steno lands the shots true and straight onto the Aruni. It's going to start to hurt. Kree trying to remove these shields inside of site to give an opening for their team, taking this main stairs control. As well, study is also in the hands of the attackers. Steno looking to use these angles that have been used and opened up by the defense against them. Lasmu being forced back to the bar as the swing from Mismo on the doorway is actually going to lose out. Steno with the top shot lands the kill. Mute in the one versus three will quickly be shut down. Steno, a masterclass of a round for him. He is bringing this game back. That was a beautiful 3k from Steno there. Just that drop shot, just to top, it's, the, it's the cherry on top at this point. Machine Souls just takes that round. I was looking very worried for them as they went two men down almost immediately with that aggression early round from Loud Esports. But they managed to get the three kill comeback, taking a very aggressive style themselves, which they are known for in this game. And that time it pays off well for them. And they are now only two rounds to go to bring it up to match point. I was gonna, I should have said it's only they're going one round closer to get in the comeback here. That would have been a lot nicer of a sentence. <laughs> but this oh. round, if you have a look at the defensive side of Loud Esports, they are going back towards that AVG side. So off. a similar sort of setup here. I think Loud Esports need to focus on what Machine Soldiers have very much been doing. They haven't gone for that trophy statue take that we normally see Golu. They've gone for a bottom floor clear out. So maybe Loud Esports can overload the bottom floor a lot more. It's interesting, right? Because that's what Mathox was trying to do. I mean, he, he wasn't overloading the bottom floor, but he was yeah. lurking around looking for those frags and he was able to find two of them. I think it was a little bit of carelessness from Machine Soldier that allowed that to happen. Not droning thoroughly enough to spot out that Mozzie is actually just running around downstairs. So if they can, like you say, take that out i mean oh, sorry from from side of loud if they can have more there to, to stop them from being taken out and continue to push that advantage that could work but they've got to be careful right because if machine soldiers then flip around and go for that backside of take well that, that's what they've gone for actually they're, they're starting to clear horizontally you see three players all lurking around waiting to see where the first bit of aggression is going to come through and it's going to be the master balcony windows Aribo, you gonna drop down and run back to red, I guess. Uh, very uh, quite unnecessary drop back down to red. They're gonna actually give up that entirety so, of uh, statuary here. It's all up to Mathox, who's roaming towards bottom floor. That if Steno and Machine Soldiers can take into just take trophy statuary, they can get nice control pretty much instantly because there's no sort of presence here. I, d I don't like how he's rotated back to site here. I don't like how passively louder playing this. 
Mm, yeah, I, I feel like you could probably contest this side of the map for a little bit longer, but it's what they're trying to go going to choose to go for. It's an interesting air jab from Stenum, actually. Putting it in that window frame it means if you vault over the side of the astronomy uh, bouncing at the top of the stairs, you will be safe from it. But walking up, it's an unexpected angle that people won't be looking for. Mismo taking a little bit of damage from Heavy on that rappel on 90. As Sloth has now taken 90 control away from the defense. And very quickly, Machine Soldiers putting themselves in a position where they have a lot of space around the bomb site that they can start applying the pressure onto it. And you saw the flank cannons already being set up here, so they are going to look for opening up this vault, as we see here, getting rid of the mute jammers, and are going to go for a quick push onto site here. They've got 1 minute 10 left, they've got all the necessary set up, the necessary flank cannons they need. So, definitely going for a zombie push it. I think the one thing they do need to do, Golu, is what we said in a previous round before, is get someone on this study window to prevent what Mizumo here is doing. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no one there. No rotations happened yet. The Sharia Gate being reactivated as well. It's going to force more utility. The Gemini coming out from Creed. So that might be able to hit it in time. Yes, it does. That's going to be for the burn that they need to give themselves that opening back into sight. The Flashbang is going to dissuade Mismo from playing that angle. He has a rotation as well, which is interesting. There's quite a lot of damage being dealt onto Aravo and Lasmu, but the grenade from Creed lands true. Two quick kills, though. Lasmu and Thorn picking one up each, and now they're trying to move into sight. They're trying to get behind this vault door. The long angle from Adrian now on that heavy balcony is in place. The swing from Aribo, though, actually catches Adrian off the swing onto the bomb boom as well baby shark will get the double kill in the round and the flank from mythox finally coming through well that's gonna be ggs yeah very good defensive round there a very very good defensive round there golu they didn't even i think the fact that they could play into study although study didn't really play a massive role into there as it was a beautiful grenade from machine soldiers there but they just managed to get up into the correct position, set themselves up, and yeah. I think definitely that attack was a bit more jaded than what we're used to. It wasn't as, um, how can I say it, refined. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. it. It felt like, across this series, both teams had a lot of proficiency on their own map, but could never quite find the answer on their opponents. Right, Loud on Chalet never quite found their footing on either side of play. I mean, the the second half, you know, when they swapped sides and they were trying to attack onto it, it started to feel like they were getting cramped out. The rounds that they won were a lot of times, again, punishing this early aggressive play from Machine Soldiers. And, uh, yeah, it's a strange one. It is a strange one, but at the end of the day, that is a draw for that major game. Having one map each, each on each of us, uh, not each other's map, was it? It was the opposition's map, I think. It on was. their own map. Oh, it was on their own map, as you just said. Yeah. I apparently am deaf. I need to go to get some hearing aids. So I do need glasses and I need hearing aids. Apparently, it just keeps on racking up. Adding to the list, yeah. Adding to the list. I'm going to have a list down the side of my wall here on the background. Shame, you, shame you've hit over... You, you're over 18, yeah. Shame you hit over 18. Yeah. No, no more free NHS stuff. Oh, no. I had to had to buy glasses recently, so it's a pain. I've still got that 2020 vision at the moment, but <laughs> not according to these isn't, cats. Right isn't now. 2020 vision like hindsight? Uh, or am I just like, just uh, completely wrong? What's 20, 2020 vision? That's like perfect oh. glasses, stuff like that. Like, like, like what I am right now. <laughs> Fair enough. What you need to give you to get into like most sort of jobs, but enough about eyesight and vision. That has been it for us today. There's going to be no interview from either of these teams. <sighs> One point each. Not a bad showing from each team. It's definitely a better showing from um, Loud Esports in that second game on Villa, making up yeah. for their first game on mm. Chalet. So, I have been Pyro, the one and beautiful, and this has been my good friend Golu the Molu, or Golu Molu, as you might know him. Make sure to check back next week. And actually, there is a podcast coming out tomorrow. No. On YouTube, I think it will be. No. There's no Twitch, but no. it should be coming, no. it should be coming out soon. Actually, no. ignore no. what I said there. I am just an absolute idiot. So, you know, I'm probably thinking of another league. So, you know, I'm just going to be quiet here. Please go, Lou, take over. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. <clears throat> Hold on. Look into look look into the light. Uh, please, everyone. Flash. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyway, that will be it for today's stream. Thank you so much for joining us. We just watched that amazing Villa game and had absolutely nothing happen after that. So, uh, well, I've been Golu Molu, and this has been my near and dear friend, Pyro. And we've had a lovely time casting this two maps here. Make sure you tune in next week on Monday for the start of the third, fourth week, sorry, of Talent League. The Major and the Miners, of course, will be back. Thank you again to Trippin for doing all the observing, all the producing, and keeping us generally running, and hopefully things will run smoothly enough where we can pass it off, and we don't get in trouble from our commanding overlord. But that has been everything for tonight's stream. Thank you once again for joining us, and tune in next week. See ya.